Welcome to another um, Couch Talk presented by Stalking a Middle Podcast. Um, I'm here with some beautiful minds. I'll let each and every one of you introduce yourself. I go by the name Uncle AK. Uh, next person, just take it over and then, you know, yeah, let's go. Yeah, my name is uh, Joe and I'm based in uh, Baltimore. My name is Tutu. And I am in the DMV. My name That's is That's my Nina. co-host, by the way. Oh, go ahead. Um, my name is Mina. I am in New York slash France. We usually yeah. New York. Wait, what? Let's talk in France. What? <laughs> Long story. <laughs> Somebody is stuck in France. Man, does Layla uh, over my there? My name is Josh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's over here. She's quite quiet. Oh, my sorry. name is Josh, aka What? Ladies first. <laughs> that was a fail. Yeah. My name is Layla, and I'm in Ottawa, Canada. Where are you from? I'm from Burundi. Okay. Josh, you can go. <laughs> what did you go? My name is Josh. Okay. Uh, Mr. Approval, King Kunta. And uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in my bed. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> that got me extra, bro. Everybody went. Good night. I would not release the location. Oh, wait, is it my turn? Did everybody go? I'm Dan. Oh, sorry. And uh, I'm in North Carolina. <laughs> hey, guys, North, you said North Carolina? Yes, ma'am. What part of North Carolina? Charlotte. Oh, okay. Shout out to North Carolina. Hornet City. Um, <laughs> Wendy, go ahead. <laughs> I can't see y'all. My name is Wendy and I am in Indiana. Wow. Indy. Aziz. Where at? Oh, Aziz, and um, I'm, I'm as close as you need me to be. Hey. <laughs> what happened? Hey. <laughs> said. Oh, gosh. What? what? Well. We started this early? Okay, okay. Listen, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, follow Stuck in the Middle podcast on all social platforms at SITM Podcast. The website is sitmpodcast.com. Go uh, read our blog post. Shout out to Nora. Shout out to Lala. They dropped uh, a dope blog uh, post. Um, I think this Tuesday, Wednesday, one of them. But just, just go check it out, man. It's pretty dope. Uh, shout out to my technical guy in the back, Reflex. Man, I see you, though. see you doing big things. Shout out to the team. Charles, uh, Ma, uh, Achiri, yeah, shout out to y'all, man. Anyways, let's get into it, man. The very first topic for this evening, right? Are you guys ready? Yes. Are you guys ready? Okay. You're ready. Should men, should men fight for women's rights? Or should women only be responsible for fighting for their rights? And I want to hear what uh, Joe got to say to this. So Joe, take this first. Um, all right. So as far as men fighting for women's rights, um, I think that um, I think we should, provided we understand um, what it is that they need from us, um, and that there's like a common agenda. Because um, a lot of times you find that it's not useful to have people on your side if they're just in it for their own personal benefit. Um, and we do see the lot a lot in society where. You know, you might have people that are essentially cheering for you, but they're not going to be there when you need it because things will get difficult at some point. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my part. Hmm. <clears throat> Wendy, what you got to say to that? Um, I think before we can answer if men should fight for women's rights, we need to understand the implication of what we're talking about. Um, a third of women have been sexually assaulted by a man and over 100 million girls have suffered female genital mutilation 
even economically, we have laws that keep women underneath men. So essentially, men men make the laws, men run the nations, men take charge of everything. And how can we now ask men or suggest that men should fight for something or fight an oppression that they're benefiting from in the first place? This doesn't mean that men cannot fight for women's rights because obviously we need allies, but you have to understand that it's kind of ironical asking for men to fight for women's rights in the first place because it's like men have all the societal and institutional power that women lack that's what we need and me asking you to give me your power is in itself a problem men dominate the media 78 percent of all big articles is written by men 84 percent of men are quoted and put in the big articles and it's just like y'all dominate the media and you guys dominate everything that we see so asking you to to fight for us is already a problem in itself because you're the you're you're i'm the oppressed group like women we are the oppressed groups and men are the dominant group and y'all dominate the media and dominate politics and dominate business and dominate economics and everything so if you're at the forefront you're fighting for something that you're doing if, if you understand what i'm saying you cannot be fighting for something but you're creating the problem in itself not to say that men should not fight for women's rights that's not what i'm saying because in the long run we all benefit from this we all benefit it's no it's no um it's not secret that men suffer too from from the patriarchy and as much as women suffer from all of this, men suffer too. So ha women having rights is gonna be beneficial for both of us, which is why we do need men to fight. But the thing that we have to bear in mind and to make sure that we're understanding is for men to fight for women's rights, they have to listen. That is the first thing, that is the bottom line. Men have to listen to what women are saying. Listen to the problems that we're bringing to the table. And if men don't do that, we're going to keep doing being on the same path i'm sorry all my light just went off we're going to keep being on the same path as we have been in the past <clears throat> damn those are some great points you bring up and i want to hear what i just got to say to that <laughs> why, are you, why, are you, why are you laughing dog like oh, it's funny <laughs> Uh, I feel like I should have came with my uh, stat guide because um, there was a lot of numbers thrown around. <laughs> uh, the number that matters to me, though, is from 1980 to 2013, over 200,000 black men were murdered in this country that men run. So I'm not sure if we forget about those statistics or we ignore those statistics, but those are real statistics. And I can't really speak for all men, but I can definitely speak as a black man all too often in the society that we live in today. Black men slated to not only be the amusement to society, but be the example of everything society doesn't want. And I feel like our women miss that point. I also feel like because our women are so focused on being their own person, especially with these movements that they really don't always completely understand, they've been weaponized against us in a lot of ways. Our goal shouldn't be to displace either, either race. Our goal should be to work together, right? Collectively, we can do so much more and it's not necessarily a matter of what men have and what women don't have. It's more a matter of what makes sense and how can we collectively work together to build a nuclear family. Hmm. <clears throat> Man, I mean, I beg. <laughs> Let's hear your <laughs> <of> this. <laughs> Can I say something? Okay. Oh, uh, sure, go ahead, Wendy. Sure, go ahead, go ahead. Um, okay, Dr. Aziz, you're very right. But what you just did is exactly what I mean. You just you just proved my point for me. The first thing you said as soon as I was done is you 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 you, you took the problem away from the problem and you focus on men. It's like when people say black lives matter and everyone wants to come and say, Well, all lives matter. 
we're not talking about the issues that men are going through. It's no secret. Men go through so many things. Men go, we all know there's a, there's a rise in, in suicide in men. Mental health is rising. And men cannot necessarily speak about their feelings because of the societal pressure of what a man is expected to be. We know this, but we cannot, and we can absolutely not divert the conversation to men. Every time that women's rights are brought up, we cannot do that. That's the whole point when I said the first thing in solving this problem is to listen to when women speak and you didn't, but you've made some very, very good points. What you said was completely right. It's not a fight of, it, we're not, you know, it's not, we're not fighting, it's not a gender against agenda. We're, we all want a common goal. We all want the same thing. But when you try to compete and compare who's pain or who is more vulnerable to harm, that's where we lose track of the goal. Um. Uh. Good point. Oh, can I say one more thing? I just yeah, wanted to say, I started my discussion this, or my statement the same way you started, George, with statistics. So if I'm talking about, or I'm, I'm changing the, the direction of the conversation from women to men, all you did was change the conversation from men to women. So literally, I did what you did, and I just reversed it. And I kind of wanted to hear what you, want, you were going to say to that. And you actually said exactly what I thought you would say. With all the statistics that you presented, I still know a lot of women that are winning. Just like I still know a lot of men that are winning. So even though you're right as well, there's still opportunity. I have a question um, for Dr. Uh, Rezi. Oh. Uh, like, um, when you're saying, the thing is for me is you're talking about black men and it's like at the same time when you're talking about black men issue and what they go through it's like literally you taking out black women why you guys go through we go through it but two times worse than you guys i don't think so yeah because uh, like because if I am in a situation, I'm in a place where there is a black man and I'm a black woman, it is true that, it, like, you're talking about, pol let's say, police brutality against black men. Like, you get, black men experience that, also black women do experience that at the same time. It's like, you are a black person, all black people experience that to the same level. And as me as a black woman when it comes to that like if we get in a situation let's say job related issue you are a black man you get more chances in that level than me i'm going to be looked down as a black woman not only because i'm black but secondly because i'm a woman so if you think you're looked down on because you're black imagine what it's like to be a black man that's feared by everybody and i am point it doesn't mean black men or women i am black i know what it means to be black especially in these countries that we live but in. do you know what it means I know to be that. a black man yes no I know. you can't because you're not how it's can a you totally explain different that? conversation it's a totally what? different world and i think from the outside looking in it, it might feel like you deal with more but when you have to provide and protect and everybody around you, including your women, are against you in some capacity. In some instances, not all women are like that, right? It's a totally different ball game. Let me give you an example. Do you realize that even when people like in America, in black men were fighting for their rights, black women were like right beside them. Most of the time when you see, let's say videos that go viral, it's a black woman who stopped when they saw that a black man was being uh, per, like, a, a police officer were trying to hurt a black man and they stop and try to protect them. So, when you're saying that like black women been fighting for the men rights for a really, really long time. We ne we are never put to the front because we're a black women, but we are there. As long as we're on the same team, I'm cool with it. I, I, I'm for the nuclear family. I didn't get I didn't get that from the first statement from Wendy. I got what was what what was we? And um, I'm saying, whoa, to me too. It's because you, when you you made your set statement, you literally kind of disregarded at the same time black women. Because me, from what I heard, what you say, I'm gonna say what I understood and, and what I heard when you were talking. You were literally posing the problem as it's only touching black men, as if black women don't go to the same same struggle as a black man. We are all black. All words. Worse, but we actually even get worse because we are women. Not only are we black, but secondly, we are also women. 
women are looked down any race, racial state, you either white or Latina, Chinese, you're gonna be looked down because you're a woman. But when you are a black woman, you are at the bottom, like literally the bottom, bottom line. I have two black sisters. I have a black mother and all they do is win. But you have but more rights than they do. <laughs> it doesn't you stop that you have than more than rights than more. them when it comes to like I feel, that. I feel like, I feel like people choose to see what they want to see. And if you really want to win, you'll find but a that's way to what, I, can't, that's I don't believe in them. That's kind of how I joined <clears throat> Wendy and what she said. Like you choosing to only see it. Like as a black woman, I don't, I know what black men go through. I have brothers. I have a lot of brothers. And I see what they go through and it hurts me. And I'm there to fight with them to get them where they want to go. But where you're sitting right now, what I'm hearing is I'm just going to see what I struggle with. I don't care what a black woman is struggling with. I think the key to what you said was what you're hearing. Now hear me. That's what I'm, yeah. This is now hear me. Now hear me. Can I say something? Sure. Wait, I mean, I'll go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say, okay. It was, there's a lot of things happening, but I was going to say, um, the black woman is the most disrespected, the most neglected, uh, unprotected in the U.S. Wow. Uh, it doesn't mean, it, listen, it doesn't mean that we don't win. It doesn't mean that. It just means it's a fact, you know, but with all that neglect and, you know, all this kind of stuff, we still find a way to win. Second of all, um, I just feel like, yeah, I feel like you did switch you did kind of flip the script talking about men because the question was about women. Do men, should we ask men to put to um, fight for rights and stuff like that? You definitely took the script on that. I just feel like, like when you said once again, it was, you know, it was about us and then it was about you guys. And then um, we, do, I wouldn't, you know, black men, black men are killed and all this stuff happened. Black women are here for you guys. We, pro we protest. In what, we, in what regard? How are you here for us? The, the black woman has fought for the black man for the longest time. But she fought for his freedom. I want to know what she's doing for black men when okay. they're getting murdered by police officers. That's my point. And then I'll let you know. The third thing I want to say, uh, I do want to say that sometimes, because we, you know, we want to be so strong and we want to be, you know, we got this and yes, we are protected and we're neglected, but we're strong and we're going to make it. Um, it's, a, it's also a fact, but also I thought since what like Wendy said, men are in positions where they can help, then they should be able to have a seat and we can make a game plan together and they can help us get where we want to get. get. So I do think that they have the biggest voice. They have a bigger voice than we have, unfortunately. So I think that they should sit down and we should be able to communicate on how we can advance and how they can help us advance. And I feel like as women, we should, sometimes we shouldn't be so, they can do nothing for us. We got it, you know? Wait, wait. Yeah. Did you say men have the, a bigger voice than you have? Yeah. Is that what you just said? Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. I'm just acknowledging. When they see you. When they see you. Where they they can they have they they're the, like in our society right now mm -hmm. they are in places in situations and positions where people will listen to them more than they listen to us. Um, Amina, I would say we also like this. This is funny, but I asked this question recently to a lot of people that I know where i don't understand how when we count worldwide women are more than men literally the numbers are like of women are more than than men and i don't we gotta first stick together yes we do need men for us to be able to get where we want to get we need their help we need them to speak up but we also need women to get to learn and understand and i feel like we've come to a point where it is good to i'm a feminist and I will fight for women anytime, anywhere, even if I don't know you, because I'm that. What is a feminist? What is a feminist? What is a feminist? 
for me i'm gonna say the That's definition a good question like we have a lot of different questions and dif- different definition a lot of people define it differently me the feminist how i define define it is I'm for the right for women to be um, equal to men. I don't say I don't listen. I don't say that physically I'm stronger than a man or I'm as strong as my brothers, my men, the other men on the other side, but I'm saying that if I'm in a position where we let's say work related, we're sitting somewhere we're working at the same place doing the same thing, I should be be able to be paid the same way or if we being considered in a position where we are sitting we are working together and then I'm actually doing a better job than you I deserve to have that promotion not you because you are a man because they think because you are a man you should supposed to be the one who lead and not the woman but even if I'm doing a better job than you who's they and and, and who are you referencing I'm referencing to things like keep happening in this world they the corporation and all of that from what I, from um, my experiences i i only see women winning so i see women that are in we do win we not they, um, that we don't win um, we do win but we fight 10,000 times more to get where we want to get sit with your mother sit with your sister and ask them how much work they had to put in to be more respected by the men they work with how they even they are in the bigger position they still be being looked down simple example let's talk about hillary hillary clinton in the us she was mostly also looked down they say they say that a woman cannot be on they, they cannot be on power because that was women though women said that <clears throat> <laughs> no, 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 but I, 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 I got a challenge. I don't know the first person that came out and said that. I'll point that out, but then continue, please. No, it's, it's, that's the thing. That's why I said we also, as women, we need to stick together. This is a problem. The problem that exists right now is even if women are, we, numbers are showing that more, we, there is more women than men, it's still, it's still crazy that we're still facing so many in some in way discrimination and being put down so many times when we are more than men when we can actually rule this world but because okay. a lot of women don't understand that that's the issue i have some just just hold on then hold on i want to hear what just got to say there's, there's something there's something that i i i I'm, I'm, i'm i cannot overlook when we say that as he is saying that you know all i see is women winning Okay, no one is saying women are not winning. There's nothing. This is no different than a black man saying, "Well, I don't believe in racial profiling because you know all I see is black men winning." Yeah, That's never been arrested. Thank There's you. Black men winning. There's black men winning, but that doesn't that, that doesn't negate the fact that this is a reality today. When we talk about women go through more 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 I'm going to have to force my language. More things than men do. Women when we talk about fighting for freedom of black men, they fought for the knowing that they would still not have the right to vote. How you know that King Kunta were you fighting? I want to say that no, no, no. this is this is Or did you just read a bunch of Malcolm X books and Malcolm Martin Luther King was talking about cuz a woman no I women didn't have the that. right to vote when the, when the, oh man okay. you tell trying to tell me that okay. when did women oh Can okay. I actually saying sure. what I'm trying to say is this is we can we can either we're saying that the black woman is winning you're right she definitely is winning but on a day they make she space you know the you are as a black man and the more you have the 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 the, the faster you realize that hey look these people been rooting for me fighting for me and put, putting a back out for me maybe it's time that we as black men also stand up for all queens and say you know what y'all going to the shit y'all have more chances than we do we recognize it we accept it and we're willing to do something about it then we're not going to get anywhere we can only fuck we can choose to focus on that one little bit and say you know what on my side everything good cuz it ain't no different than the, than the house niggas when 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 the when the house lady they were all like everything good on this side i'm eating good we good so why i got fight for y'all we got to we got to be able to look out on the bigger in the, in the bigger as, as, as i want to say as is i want to say that um as is i want to say that she just binged um the whole point that i made from the start was we cannot go on with the conversation of if men should fight for women's rights comparing 
we can't compare who is suffering more. But even if we want to do that, you cannot sit here and tell me that because, because what you see around you is okay, that means that's the case for everybody. Statistically speaking, these are numbers, and numbers do not lie. Women have been oppressed for generations. Just because the women around you are winning, as you so put it, and that's very subjective, your definition of winning anyway. You cannot say that just because you, what you see around you is winning. That's the case for every other woman, because it's not the case. One out of six women experience domestic violence. That is a massive number. There are seven billion people on this planet. One out of six experience domestic violence. One out of three have been assaulted and will be assaulted in the course of their lives. I cannot walk out at night. I cannot walk at night thinking, oh, I'm safe because I'm either gonna get assaulted or I may get raped or I may get killed. These are facts. It's not a matter of, oh, did my sister get raped or oh, did my auntie or my cousin, all in what I see around me. This, uh, this is a general statistic statement. And you cannot tell me that women have it better than men. They do. That is I have a true. question for one day. Yeah. What, okay, I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to figure out what it is that you think that equality would fix in that issue. Like, because you're asking for things like, you know, you can't walk at night and, you know, not be raped or something like that. It could, something could happen. You have more chances of having a situation happen to you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm trying to figure out what it is that this have to do with your rights. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is, an, it's like when Aziz was talking about, I can walk, like, honestly speaking, there are hours of the night where I don't want to wear a hoodie. Hmm. You know what I mean? We're like That it. has nothing to do with being a man. Like you literally, like it's cold at night, but you're not guaranteed 100%. Like if I walk around in this neighborhood, with a hoodie on, you know, like that's, I'm trying to see what that has to do with like, what the, uh, you know, going forward type of situation. Like going forward, you have all the rights and all the quality that you want. Well, what would that do can in that, in that I, issue? Can I answer the Can, can I, I just say, ask say some, <laughs> okay, say some, um, and mostly what she's saying is it's kind of, I feel like she's trying to tell you somehow that's how it's related. We do need men to do like, to do better, talk about it, discuss about it, talk to you. Like, let's say for me on my end, what I'm doing is I'm educating my nephews to know how to act around women and know how to protect a woman when it's needed. I talk to them about it. They know that, listen, if you're walking and you see a woman, woman who's alone and she's being because we're still gonna have crazy people as the same way that we have racist people you know but i want to educate the same way we like black men will be trying to say it's not because i'm in a hoodie that uh, i'm against there or somebody who's going to be killing you and i'm i'm just a person who's walking who's cold and who's wearing a hoodie as a woman i want to be able to also i be able to say I want to walk outside at night and feel secure because I know that my brothers and the other men around me are talking about it and educating other men to not to do better. I and know. I want to say with the whole hoodie analogy, <sighs> again, I keep making the point, we cannot keep comparing who has it worse or who has it better, but you can walk with a hoodie in a black hood, in a black community, right? Let's just say, because the whole concept of not being able to walk with a hoodie is because of racism. If you go to a white neighborhood with a hoodie, it's like, oh, who is this black person here? You can walk in a black neighborhood comfortable with a hoodie on during the day even. I cannot walk, it doesn't matter where I am and it doesn't matter what time of day it is. I can get sexually harassed at any time of the day, anywhere. It doesn't even begin to compare. And how this has to do with moving forward, like she said, respect it's it's inherent in us the upbringing of men the way we raise boys and the way we raise girls to not respect women and this is some sometimes these things are subconscious because like i say it as is i see you i you're gonna ask a question i can i can already see your reaction i can see your reaction <laughs> it is it is this is i need you to understand just like racism oppression is very systemic it's not outright it's not gonna come to your face and be like oh i hate men or i hate women disrespect women when you disrespect women 
It's a learned behavior. It's something we've seen as a kid growing up, how women are presented to you. That's something that's subconsciously in your head. And that's the social aspect of it. But if we want to talk about the economical aspect, like she was talking about equal pay, there's so many laws that can be put in place. We have an equal pay act that is not even being enforced. Mm. Mm-hmm. Can I add something? We have an equal pay act that is not even being enforced. Even health care. Nothing is the same for the women. In 2010, when Obama was in office, he passed the Affordable Care Act that made things better for women. It was the best thing that has happened for women's health in a generation. When Trump came into office, him and Republicans, they voted it out. Like they said, they want to cancel it and replace it. These are all men. Again, this is what I keep saying, like the dominant group making decisions for us, which I say it's an irony for us to ask men to fight for our rights because you are the oppressor. Can I say something? Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Right. So, okay, I heard a couple of things, and I'm going to go chime in off, off that point you just made. Because first you said Obama instituted the uh, Child Care Act, right? You were okay. happy about that. Then you went and mentioned Trump and said he reverses that. So at the same time, when a man did something that benefited you, he was good. Ooh. When he did something that didn't benefit you, now men are the problem. Ooh. And I'm not, I'm not attacking you, I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking you. All I'm saying is that it goes back to the point that I made in the beginning. The bottom line is what do women need from us? Mm-hmm. And Thank those you. of us that are willing to do it will be on board. Okay. The rest don't matter. Thank you, I'm happy. Thank you for I'm asking my thank- question. That's what I'm trying to ask. Um, Joe, Joe, oh, can I, can I? First, the first go- fact that you, 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 you said one thing and then said something completely different. In the same analogy. Oh, no, no, no. It's not a different thing. It's facts. It's what happened. Obama passed the law and Trump took it out. The hey, point that I was hey, trying to make fact. about... That's not... She just... Basically, the first Listen. guy that tried to do something right. Listen. The next Listen. Let, let, let Listen. Wendy continue and explain her. Listen, I was going to... I was trying to, I was trying to um, pick it back on what, on what Joe said and asked this question. Do you think... Because, I mean, he touched on it, so I, I might as well just ask this question, right? Do you think society can ever be fair if women and men are given equal rights. With that, the question to ask is like, what really is equal rights? How do you measure that? Let's talk. Mm -hmm. Yes, Wendy, please continue. Okay. To answer AK's question, let's move on. It's just so much going on. Um, Is society ever... (laughs) Is society ever... Is society ever... Trump is not. Huh? (laughs) Obama is great and Trump is not. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to just focus on Aiken's question. It's just so much going on. Is society ever going to be fair? <sighs> Again, I want to break this down into, into different categories, right? Economically, politically, and every other league you want to talk about. If we have equal rights, yes, we're going to have the chance. We're going to have the opportunity to be fair. What is A equal rights? Point. Equal, okay, I'm going to give you an analogy, a perfect analogy of equal rights. An example. Rights. And, and, and which ties with feminism, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, an example of equal rights is this. We have a military, right? Sorry, my phone. We have a military. And they say we may cannot join the military for whatever reason. Women are the weaker sex, da 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 We may cannot join the military. Now, equal rights and feminism wants me to have the choice to join the military if I wanted to. Now you have to understand that I don't have to join the military to prove that the rights are equal. It just gives me the choice and it gives me the option that if I wake up tomorrow and I want to join the military, I can. That is equal rights and that is feminism. When we ask for things, it's not because every single woman on the planet needs to use that thing. It's equitable and it's equal. It's like having a choice of outfit. If I have just a black t-shirt, all I wear is a black t-shirt. If I have a black t-shirt and a white t-shirt, tomorrow I can wake up and be like, you know what, maybe I want to wear a white t-shirt today. It doesn't mean that I would necessarily wear it, but I have the choice if I needed it. If I I have the option if I need to. That's the bottom line of equal rights. Give it to me. Because I need to use it. You don't know. Like, it's in itself. I don't know. We're even The fact that we're even talking about giving people rights. Do you see how vague this is, though? 
I don't think it is, though. I don't think it's vague. It's yeah. I don't think we it's can, vague. Can, well, okay, let, me, let me just say why so I say it's vague. We can talk about the equal pay, the wage gap. We can talk about the wage gap. Let me and you say it's vague. Wendy, one, 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 one second. Wendy, one, one second. Dan, go ahead. Let me explain to you why I see it vague. For example, there are things that cannot be equal. It's very simple. Women give birth. Men don't. We cannot be equal in that aspect. That's not equal. When you're gone, it's, listen, listen. You cannot have, you and I cannot have the same law that works the same way. It's impossible. But hold on, hold on, Dan. Dan, hold on. Let me ask you this question then. If if you're leaning towards that, then um, abortion, right? Why do men make rules for women when it comes I'm to gonna, abortion? I'm going to go on that too. That's why I'm saying this equality thing is impossible because there are, things that, there are things that you have to deal with that has a lot to do with, like you said, the affordable care and all these other things that have nothing to do with me. Mm. What? I don't need, yes, it has not, hold on, let me explain how it has nothing to do with me. It's very simple. It doesn't affect me personally. That's all I'm, I'm saying. Okay, I now, have a question, Dan. If you're saying it doesn't affect you, it affect you personally, does it mean then we're going, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to bring back the Aziz way he's saying, <laughs> does it mean when black men no, are no, 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 no. can just be like, I'm saying, you don't care because no, it doesn't What I'm saying me? is this. If you and I, the laws that are, I can set up, men quote unquote that have set up there are laws that work for them right i'm happy you said that oh therefore for you for a woman to ask the same law to apply to her Mm -hmm. is a little unfair to the woman and i'm just pointing this out that's all i'm saying because when you go to give to listen to the woman like like, quality versus equity like what yes that's what i want people to understand equality versus equity equality and equity is two things Equity is what we need. Equality is impossible because it's the same thing as why do we have handicap parking? Why we don't, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like there are things that are not, you cannot be mad because this person can, doesn't, is incapable of walking down, I park in this building because we got stairs. The I, woman, do you, you know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm trying to but, understand when there is no equality in this issue. But, but, but then, but that, I, think, I think what the chat, what, what's, again, I'm not trying to mansplain. I'm going to say what my understanding of the whole thing was, because I, I don't believe in mansplain. Hopefully that doesn't translate to mansplain. But my understanding of the whole thing is, is, is rules and regulations that are put in place to even the playing field. The same way you're saying that, hey, you know, there's a handicapped person, they can't work in this building because there's stairs. Yeah, so they're going to put an elevator in there, okay, for them to be able to do it. But they have the option, okay? <laughs> they still have both options, whichever one it is. But all they want is basically being able to say, you know what, I have the option of doing this. And I have, yeah, I have this option. And I took it or I didn't take it. Right. By the way, if you handicap, they have the choice of getting out the wheelchair and, you know what, walking on their hands. I don't hands think that's how it works. But. And, <laughs> that's and, also an option, you know, but, I want to I want to I want to comment on when you said um uh, um equality is impossible and you you gave an explanation of women give birth and and all of that stuff. But we all uh, in a workplace. My sister said, huh? Like a woman giving birth and then having to go. When we talk that about time when she's in a hospital. Right. That's why I'm saying you just completely misunderstood equal rights. When we talk about equal rights, we're not talking about giving birth. There are things that are inherently different between a man and a woman. And she already said it from the start. Physically, we're different. Different things happen. I menstruate and you don't. And that's the way it is. You have a penis, I have a vagina. And that's always going to be what it is. When we talk about equal rights, we talk about the things that affect us. Education, socially, politically. Healthcare. These are things that are very... This, these are things... These are institutions that affect our day-to-day existence. If we cannot, if we cannot access those things like men do... The society is imbalanced and everybody suffers. I said from the beginning, men suffer too. From all of this, men suffer too. Mm-hmm. Which is why I'm saying equality helps both sexes. But you cannot, you cannot, you cannot use our physical differences to show that equality is, 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 is impossible. That's I'm, not I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let Amina speak, but I want to add something after. Okay. 
Go ahead, Sabina. I'm right here. Oh, okay. now. oh sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I kind of agree with Dan on that one. I would say that society and institutions and even the government, like, there are people, not to be like a Debbie Downer, but there are people who are, who are always going to be on top. People who are always going to be at the bottom. And it's sad. Like, I'm not saying I don't want it to change. I want it to change, of course. I want it to be, I want to be equal. I want to be, you know, receive the same pay as a man. I want it, I want all of that. But I just think that it is impossible. There are people who are going to always make sure that we don't get what we should be getting. And I think it's going to be very hard. Even we might come very, very close to it one day, but I just feel like some, just some institutions, especially like there, some companies, institutions, like those are gonna like literally run out of business if this kind of things happen like in, in society. So I just feel like it's gonna be very hard for everyone in the world to have equal rights just for, because it benefits so many people. All right, so like, let me or just- Or it benefits so many people, you know? Mm -hmm. So let me, let me just uh, mention what I wanted to say. So we spoke earlier about fairness and that, that's closely tied to equality, um, but there wouldn't be a need for justice if there wasn't unfairness. So by definition, it's kind of cooked into laws that there will be fairness and unfairness. Some people will experience things different to others. So I think for men and women, it's one thing to say we want equality and there's one thing to say that we want equal opportunity. And even if equal opportunity happens, it will have to be trickled down into laws and rights. Mm -hmm. So there are gonna be things that women, men and women face and they're just gonna be different. We spoke earlier about how there were two different presidents in power and two different results. So it didn't actually matter if there was a man in power or a woman. It was whether that person could uh, had, was in a position of power to affect decision-making that was ultimately gonna impact people. So. Again, it goes back to this idea, you know, it's not about are things going to be equal? They're probably not going to be just because we're mm -hmm. that much different to one another. But when that need arises, are we going to step up to it? Because the last thing I want to add is there's also a difference between revolution and mm -hmm. evolution. A revolution will put us together, uh, pit us against one another. We will be adversaries. It's based on destruction. There are certain rules and structures that apply depending on what system you apply. If it's an evolution, which is what I think we're trying to talk about, mm -hmm. is that there will need to be things that change that we do without completely dismantling structure. Um, I want to uh, piggyback mm -hmm. off what Amina said. Um, she said um, things are never going to be equal. It's never going to happen that way. I just want to say um, it's just because we're never going to combat war hunger. hunger. Does it mean we should stop feeding people or we should oh, stop yeah. fighting for it? Just because something is seemingly never going to be achieved doesn't mean you stop fighting for it. Because guess what? There are people who are benefiting from, from us fighting for this. It's, it's, it's a big, it's a, it's a, as Trump would like to say, it's an unseen, invisible enemy. But you have to keep fighting for these things because there's so... The things happening in the world, in, in, in the Middle East, it's just, it's a disaster. And we cannot stop fighting for it. Like Joe says, we have to come together and just focus on the mission. I, have, I keep saying this and I keep saying it and I keep saying we cannot keep comparing who has it worse or who, ha who has it bad. We have to figure out what we're going to do about the problem. Yeah. I agree. I agree with you. I don't think we should stop fighting at all. Like, I just... You know, but like you said, like us fighting, you know, like there are like lawyers and stuff like that who are getting paid to like the, to work on these things. So if everybody, everybody was equal, then well, where is a job? Like what kind of job would they do? You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm saying. Like institutions are made. So there's always something to fight for. <laughs> so some people can always benefit from people fighting for those things. So I was saying, I don't think it's, we're always going to be equal, but we should, I mean, I, I agree. Like you should never give up, but you should never stop fighting. Like I totally agree. I was just saying that. Someone, someone said something in the comment. They were saying that we got the whole definition of equity and equality wrong. 
So I asked them to go ahead and just find it. And they said, equity, making sure people get access to the same opportunities that allow them to gain equality. So and the example given was, you know, if uh, Lala is thirsty and Nora is hungry and the governor gives out food, that's equality. Nora is no longer hungry, but Lala is still thirsty. But if the governor goes ahead and gives food to Nora, who was hungry, and water to Lala, that would be equity. I don't know, maybe whoever does want to help. <laughs> I have a question. Mm. So, uh, ladies, and guys, you could chime in on this, but I just want to see. So, should men be allowed to make the decisions about policies regarding Hell women? Hell no. And no. I want to ask you no. that question first. No. We can go off. no. All right, so go ahead and explain why. Because they, like, as they say, like, right now, it's the same thing as going at what... Um, <clears throat> Men doesn't see the same way, they don't go through what we go through and they don't see the same way we see things. For example, like when Aziz keeps saying, I see women winning and him not understanding, kind of somehow not understanding what we're trying to explain and telling him that we do struggle more. He, for me, if he was in a position where he has to, to uh, put his input on what is better for me, I would not want it because he doesn't understand me. So he has no right to that. Okay. I feel like should they, should they have a say? Absolutely not. But should they, should we use them to, you know, help put those laws and stuff like that in place? Yes. But as far as like deciding what should be good for us or not, as men shouldn't have a say about that. Definitely not. Unless <laughs> they listen and sat, sat down and listen and understand us and take into what we're saying and they be they are kind of like like when you say like you it's better to not judge somebody unless you put on their shoes and walk in their shoes and know what they have to go through so unless they really sit down and be like you know what i see what you're saying i'm seeing the struggle they're going through i know what you mean and because i understand that i'm gonna help you so that we can better like this um other than that you have no right into that because you don't know if you don't take the time and you have no right to vote for that. It's like saying it when he doesn't even know what black men mean. Go ahead, please. <laughs> so let me say this. I think there's a subset in society, a subset of people in society, right, that are always going to see the problems and never see the solutions to those problems. And I'm not saying that you qualify. I'm just saying that there are certain people that will find a way to make it happen regardless. In terms of politics and creating rules for who and who's doing what, at the end of the day, we live in an artificial construct and it's operating the way that it's operating. What are you gonna do about it and how are you gonna exact the change that you need to make sure that whoever you're defending is going to get the equal rights or the respect or feel dignified the way that you feel like you're not being represented? So I really just um, need the solutions to um, keep thinking about the problems. Um, and this empowerment by victimhood thing never really works. We've been protesting for for decades. What are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? I just want to say, okay, as is first of all, protesting works because the Malcolm X's and the Martin mm -hmm. Luther Kings they started the civil rights movement by protesting, and they got the job done. So protesting works. When you talk, your voice is very valid. You have to say something, but that's not the point. You're quoting Malcolm, um, and, Malcolm and Martin. You mentioned, sorry, what? Martin? Say what? You said, are you quoting Malcolm and Martin? No, I'm saying that you said that we've been protesting for years. I'm just trying to say that it actually does do something. Because if you don't speak about the problem, you're not even going to get a step into fixing the problem. The problem when, you said, when you said, I don't want to I'm not going off on a tangent. <clears throat> when you said that um, the, uh, we have to find problems to our solutions, regardless of what is going on, I need you to understand that this is systemic. Women are going through stuff that men make the laws. And I'm going to use abortion, for example. You can sit here and tell me that, oh, I can find a solution. If I really want to find a solution, I can. If I get pregnant and I want to find a solution, I cannot because there are laws made by men that limit me from doing what I can. I cannot abort the child. So I'm just trying to show you that there's so many, there's so many laws that restrict women from doing things that they, they, they want to do. 
laws that restrict women from getting certain jobs. In so many places in the world, there are laws that restrict women from doing a certain kind of job. There are laws that need women to take permission from their husband before they can do a certain kind of job. Like, so yes, men may want to do something, but there are laws which have been made by men might add, add, that cannot that restrict them from doing what they want to do, from, from finding the solution to their problem. So that even complete you. Can you to just complete Wendy, can you even imagine that in the Middle East, literally they just allow in 2019 for women to drive, to have a like to have a license. That's how you can that's in the moment where you start understanding how like this is needed. We need to fight for this, we need to protest, we need to continue this fight. Because maybe some women, like there, there's some countries where it's like the equality can be seen, but in other countries it hasn't been there. Because if you are asking yourself, just in 2019, a woman just got a right to have a license to drive a car. 2019, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. I, think I, I gotta say something real quick. I, I mean, to the question being asked about should men have a uh, say, yes and no. <clears throat> As men, I think it's high time we realize our track record is shit and we don't have a good track record of looking out for women. That's right. one. Second, if, if there are men that are gonna go ahead and say, because we can't just be out here and be like, oh no, men should not have any say. It's, I'm sorry, this is, what, this is what it is. If there are men that are gonna have say, they need, these need to be men, because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm guessing they have mothers, they have sisters, there's women that they're gonna be representing. They need to be willing to understand what their concerns are, what their challenges are, before they make laws and regulations that are gonna affect them. Okay, don't just come here and tell me about whatever, and I am a Christian, just for, so you know. I don't come here and tell me about your bullshit religion and tell me that, oh, you know what? He says, he says, she says, I'm sorry, nah. At the end of the day, it's not your body, okay? At the end of the day, it's the challenges that you end up facing when a guy decides to walk out, guess who's stuck with dealing with those problems? The woman is. So until men are willing to, to decide and say, you know what, I understand what you're going through and I would like to help, this, that, then we just need to shut up. Right. But we need to acknowledge that our track record has been trashed so far and that we either need to step aside or understand that, hey, you know what, we need to do something that's also gonna help us. This is no different than saying, you know what, hey, sure, why man, you know, make policies for black people. Hey, look, if he's not gonna understand the, the, what, what our challenges are and what our problems are, what then he, he shouldn't. He shouldn't, simple as that. You can't sit here and pretend it just because you have the wee wee between your legs that you get to make the decisions, you don't. I, I understand your constituents' problems, understand who the, the people who, who you want to make policies for, who, who these policies are gonna affect, understand what their challenges are, and how it's gonna affect them, and then make to make policies that are gonna uh, uh, make policies accordingly. I'm, I'm starting to even start stuttering now. That's gonna be uh -oh. a little high. Just... Go ahead. From the from the beginning, I um sorry to cut you short. I just have to. From the beginning, I said the only way we're gonna move forward with a solution is if men listen to what women have to say. I said this. That, that was the first thing I said, and I gave you guys an example about Obama and Trump. That is a, that's what I'm trying to say. When men listen, and we know the difference between Obama and Trump. I don't want to get into it. We, we, <laughs> we know the difference when it concerns women. That, that's, that's the difference when you see a leader who listens to the problems of the people and actually does something to help the situation. I'm not saying that men, men definitely need to be in the room as well, but they need to be able to listen and provide what is needed for women. Um, I, I agree with that. The thing that I just want to add is, um, I remember watching uh, Netflix documentary, I think it was Roe v. Wade. Um, there was one female protester who, you know, kind of summed up the whole thing. She said, at the end of the day, uh, women's rights or bodily rights will always be an issue for men because women are the one that produce the workers and the soldiers. So that's one thing. You do have to be aware of that. The other thing that I'm going to add is, I always, I'm always concerned you have to have balance in society. We see that from nature where equilibrium helps. We also need to understand that because let's just take a hypothetical scenario where women get all the rights that they want, especially when it comes to abortion. There's this sort of tipping point where what if, or a sort of numbers game where what if more women decide for abortion than against? What happens for the future of society, period? 
the numbers start declining. So when you take that into account, and you can also take the, the other flip side of that, is if women are not allowed to have abortions, they are put at an economic disadvantage by default. So the overarching thing to focus on is us as a group, as a dynamic, as the numbers that we have in terms of group economics. What are the, the laws or the position or the stance that we can take that's gonna benefit us the best? Because there's always gonna be interests that need to be weighed and no one is necessarily dominant over the other. If we look at it from a household standpoint, that's very different. Of course, it makes sense for women to earn equal pay because it doesn't help to have a breadwinner, whether it's a man or a woman, because we're losing economically. Both have to make money. Mm -hmm. Then there's the other dynamic as far as our overall progeny and the legacy that we leave, the future of succession. There has to be a continuation of people still being born. So it's very nuanced. As long as we understand those intricacies and we're accounting for them, then it doesn't really matter whose interest is dominant as long as it's speaking to the next step and that being better than the previous one. I'm glad you asked that question though because you literally, that was literally the next question I was gonna ask. Um, Dan, I'm gonna shoot that to you. So do you think that women deserve to earn the same amount as men? Yeah. Sir, yeah. Can you repeat the question? Should women earn the same as men? Yes. Oh, women earn as much as men? Yes. I mean, you go to the same school, you have the same education, you do the same work. Why? Yeah, it's more than it. us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? And and then you go to work, and now being a woman is a problem. I, that don't make sense to me. But right. also, there's also a factor that I want to add in. When she has a baby and she has to go off work, and now she'll never have ever. Like literally, you gotta switch your job, but you will never get a promotion in that particular office because now you're a baby pop. We don't know how many babies you're gonna pop out. <laughs> now you, all we see is a baby maker. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I'm not saying it's it's okay. And this is not a man or woman situation. It's a business situation. You're a liability. It shouldn't be an issue. They look at you as a liability because once you're pregnant there are those that have you know hard pregnancies where they have to be while, off work yeah. for a while right and then let's say you give your baby uh, you you give birth but you have problems you're off again for a while and let's say god forbid you want to raise your kid wow. <laughs> how dare you it's 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 baffle, it baffles my mind. It's like okay, now this person has the audacity of one of raising a kid. How dare you gonna go for two years? Like what? And then you assume you can come back, Bruh, Like if your mama raised, why wouldn't you want this child to have a mama that raised it? You know, it's it's just. But then and also it's like when it comes to business, we've got to a point where it's a dollar sign and a number. Because I don't know if y'all work in an office, but we have, what do you call it? I don't work in an office, so it's a uh, performance. You have a performance review that shows if you're making us money or you're not making enough or you're losing us money. And for women, I guess that also is part of your performance mm -hmm. review. You're not here. You went here on Tuesday. Why? Then there's you know, a question. I had, periods were killing me. There is a question for you. So that's a pregnancy is so pregnancy is now a liability. That's why they just asked you. In a business industry, yes. Because what if you are not doesn't that doesn't make the woman like doesn't yeah, even if I'm the woman went and they had a kid and they come back and they walk the same way and actually even perform better than men. That doesn't um, that. let me tell you why. Because we all had mothers and our mothers had our back, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking in a business industry. I'm not, this is not reality, like how things should be. This is how sh things are. You, after having a child, your child is a priority, not your business anymore, not your work. Unless you drop your kid, which most people won't believe that you're going to put your office and your work first. Because what I need from you is for you to make me money. That's why I hired you. Mm -hmm. Now that you just had a baby, you are no longer a priority. 
in your book mm -hmm. because I'm not a priority in your book or because I feel like I'm not a priority in your book, I'm gonna look at you as, I'm gonna reciprocate the situation. You're no longer a priority in my book either. And that that's how they look at it. Uh, I'm just pointing out facts. I have that's a question not, for the guys in the room, I'm sorry. Sorry, uh, we've, had the, we've had this whole um, pregnancy talk and work and we have completely not mentioned fatherhood. I was literally about to ask that question though. Right. I was let about to ask. You, so what let me tell you why. Oh, oh, Dan, Dan, I want to hear her question. Hold on, Dan. Like we have had this whole, like, and we have completely missed out on fatherhood because I don't understand how we're giving women time to go up and take care of the baby and the, the man is still at work. I just want to ask you from a man's perspective, are you okay with Personally? That? Personally, no. <laughs> but society set up in the sense where a woman takes care of a kid a man provides and this is not just like a man problem this is an everybody problem yeah um, but yeah, this is how the system is set up yeah but things that's the, I guess, i'm sorry what, when the, what was the question exactly i was asking from a man's perspective because we've had this whole conversation about pregnancy and work and liability and we completely missed out on fatherhood nobody mentioned anything about the father taking a paid leave as well or him being productive or not productive because he's taking care of the child or not supporting his wife or anything so i'm asking you as a man are you okay with the fact that are you okay just being neglected and putting all the responsibility on the woman to take care of the child you said are you being, okay with that? being being no if if, if what she's trying yeah. to say is this. I see it as neglect. I feel yeah. like we're I'm neglected. trying to understand what you mean by I feel neglected. And like giving them the opportunity Don't to Don't you want to be with your kid? It's that simple. Yeah. That's what she's trying Ooh, to ask. Okay. And what I'm trying to say is this. A guy that would say, hey, I'm trying to take some time off to spend time with my child is a guy that is going to get fired. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's that simple. Yeah, I, I, and you, this is where it reverses again. Some equality things that are like, this is where the equality problem comes in. There are things that you can do that I can't do. You see what I'm saying? No, actually. And that that, that just a very sensitive subject for me, and I want to say something when you're done. No, my, my thing is this, right? Is this is why, and, and and this is no disrespect to anybody else that, that lives their life this way, just so we're clear, okay? This is why, for me, a nine to five has been a no-no for me, okay? Because if there's one thing I've realized that it does, is it takes away from the family. The whole reason why I will be working is to provide for my families, to be there for my families for all this, right? And I've said this all, for as long as I can think of. I am willing to struggle for as long as I can struggle so that when the time comes if my significant other or the mother of my child decides to say you know what i want to go back to work i can go ahead and i can stay and you can go to work without a problem okay i don't want you jeopardizing your time off work to say oh i mean shit you want to put i'll pull up with the baby at lunchtime so you can do the breastfeeding one night if you don't like pumping like we can make some work right and this, this is this is not this is not a cap or anything, but it, to be honest, it, it 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 sucks in a way. But this is exactly why I truthfully despise the nine to five idea and the whole I'm gonna, thing. I'm I just want to say that something in. about that. It's not a nine to five problem. It's a society problem. Because <laughs> okay, how do you feel? No, I'm just saying. Like, listen, do you understand that you have to literally bust your ass, refuse a job just because you feel like if I take this job that's it I, I can't have a fam like I can't be a family man and a working man it's impossible it's not even part of a system that is accepted it's either you are a working man or you are a family man um that's, that's why how it is both? why can't you be both that's the problem why can't you be that's both? what we're trying to it's say doable. you can, you can be, like, be both that is a lot harder okay See, wait, wait, hold on wait hold on Wait, hold on. Like Joshua said, right? He likes to be, I mean, he he don't he despises the idea of a nine to five. All right, my nigga. Shit, go and start a business. Who's stopping you from not starting exactly. a business? That's if true. that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do, right? But, if somebody else is doing his nine to five because he's not ambitious enough, 
to go and start a business or because he doesn't have the idea. Let me not say because he's not ambitious enough because people struggle with different levels. Like, no reason. Go ahead. You know what I mean? No, people, no. Like, okay. like, 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 life is levels, my nigga. There's levels to this shit, my guy. You know what I'm saying? You could be seeing a blabby, oh, my, oh, me, I want to start a business. With what money? How? You don't even, <laughs> like, you don't even have an idea, but you want to start a business. Who are you fooling? People or yourself? No, but like, AK, okay, um, understand this. Any business that starts require workers. People, once your business gets as big as you want it to be, you will need people to work in that system. And if also the people that work for you needs leave time, and it's not part of a, of a system that allows them to go be with their kids and still be able to work, you're still going to have the same problem in the end as a society, not as a person. You fixed your problem. What have you done for the people that are in the same shoes as you? They have to do it for themselves. Uh, and can I that. add to that? I, I heard a, um, an ins a scenario like that. I think it was on the radio. It was a female hairdresser. She had, obviously, a uh, female staff. This COVID thing happened. Yes, she was able to transition and do some online um, stuff, you know, teaching clients how to cut their husband's hair. But she still said that it happened at just the right time because she needed that lady to work. She was pregnant and she couldn't work. So like you said, one way or another in a business setting and because business is part of society, there are some things you just have, to, they come inherent because of business. And we, it's up to us to try and figure out how to juggle that. If you work a nine to five, <laughs> there's gonna be a set of rules on how you juggle that. It might either be you change things in the workplace or you change things in your home dynamic, like you said, or it's gonna be how the wife is paid, or you change things in terms of a broader economic standing with us as black folk and say, okay, we should move towards entrepreneurship with a broader view of better being able to manage our household. So there's just these nuances that we'll have to think about strategically, depending on where we are and how we're interacting with that, you know, business or at the home. Yeah, you said the whole business thing. You said the whole business thing. Just hold on real quick. They say charity begins at home, right? I got a question for, for the women. If a woman starts a business, right? Mm -hmm. She employs women and she gives them all these benefits that women want. The next woman starts it, right? And the city is trend. Anything that trends pops. If we see, if we see that trend, for example, this can start pulling men in one by one. Say, okay, you know what? I can hop on this. I can hop on this. My question is, do you guys know of any women, any woman-owned business that all these things are being implemented? Wait, wait, wait. So I'm oh, go for the women first. I was gonna say something else, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm just curious. Um, sorry, can you ask again? I'm, I got lost. Do you guys know of any women women owned business, right? That has these rules, like these rules that women want, this equality thing or whichever. Do you guys know of a business that implements a woman owned business? That's okay, you know what? I'm taking it upon myself to say, forget the law, right? And then treat women the way they mm -hmm. do they want women to be treated. Do you guys know of any establishment or such? No, I don't. On that Mm, oh my I don't, but I'm sure it exists. I'm so, my, so my question is this, my question is this. Wait, hold on, no, I, I want to say something. AK, when, you say, when, you, when you say businesses, are we talking small businesses or corporations? Either or. Because small businesses have more flexibility with um, dealing with paid and stuff like that. If you want to talk about corporations, um, not many women are at the top level to make such decisions 12 okay hold on hold on hold on women hold on, hold on. Wendy, positions. Wendy, those... Wendy hold on before you finish let me cut you right there real quick ask you this question now you now now you say now you say men don't listen right you you you, you guys keep throwing this thing that men don't listen men don't listen <laughs> let me ask you this question you why do you say to categorize like you said corporation and small business but then when you want to shoot things at me why can i say oh you know what it's them niggas over there it ain't me but you won't let me be how is that possible please make me understand oh no i was oh, just oh, okay, no. okay, okay. No. before we dive okay. can i can i answer the question you <laughs> you're too personal before we go too far <laughs> okay. I, i'm asking permission to address the first question you asked right okay go go, 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 go. this this has 
Okay, so we're focusing on this as a, as, a, as a corporation or small business and all this. Let me tell you something. I was talking to somebody, and this is how I realized us that live in North America, and I don't know somewhere else, we've got it all fucked up, okay? Excuse my French. But when you hear about people that live, I talked to this one girl, she lives in uh, somewhere in, I think Norway was, right? Home girl had her baby. She's been on maternity leave since January 2019, and she's scheduled to be on there until January 2021, okay? And do you, and my thing is this, my thing is this. When you have, maybe we haven't figured it out, but somebody out there has figured it out. An entire country, an entire people have figured it out. And maybe it's high time. We maybe do a little copy paste from whatever they're doing and figure out how we can make that work over here. Amen. Thank I'm you. Not, I'm not against Thank Josh. You so much. Josh. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. You're, you're we against, can't, against we can't, question. We can't, we can't expect, we cannot expect. <laughs> just yeah, one small answering answering answering. Yeah, just, <laughs> Listen. <laughs> no, that's He's saying it. If we know of a small, of, of, a, of a business owned by a woman, I know, we, we know of entire countries at this point, okay? That have figured this part out, okay? So if somebody has figured this shit out, and they figure out, look, we can do this and we can do that, okay? Yeah. If you're expecting one person Whoa. to do that, because <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we the men are the ones leading majority of this shit, okay? We are the ones to blame for majority of this shit. And I'm not trying to get this for cloud or nothing like that. This is truly what I believe, just so we're clear, okay? But we have to come up with a solution because if, if, if you can't expect a small business to find somehow, some way, it manage to figure this whole thing out by themselves because it's not possible. It's not possible. Oh, the go, co corporations, it's not possible. They're going to give you three months. They're going to give you three months of paternity leave and three months of maternity leave. And then boom, that's it. Your, your baby is six months old. Now y'all got to figure out how to, how to raise a six month old child while you both were. Do you, do you know, do you know how, how, how much bonus this CEOs be making like a bonus check? Like it's a check on top of the check you're supposed to make, right? Maybe they need and to go. It's worth a billion and trillion no. dollars. No, like some dude be making a bonus check of three trillions and millions of dollars, billions. But then you think about it, you're like, all right, cool. We cannot pay these women to to worry, like to take care of their kids. But this dude is getting a billion dollar bonus check on top of his, you know, like his own paycheck, which is also it gotta be in that ballpark. You know what I mean? And then there is, and the person, like, it's just like, the way the society we've already established is this. We are about money, we are not about people. But this the thing, and, you know, about, like, that comes yeah. back to what Joshua said though. Like when you were talking about business and, and, and I'm at the same time, it's kind of to respond to AK question. Um, Joshua just said, like, there's also people in the comments saying the same thing. Scandinavian countries has figured that. Why not? But us? they call them they socialists. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah. They mm -hmm. don't say they figure out their system. They say the socialist people. Mm -hmm. The I agree government with that. is going to take our stuff. The I government is going to take our stuff. The government is going to own. Because you got to understand, something got to be given in order for you to mm -hmm. receive something. Mm -hmm. Nothing is free. Mm -hmm. and I'm, nothing I'm, is free I'm glad. what do they do in order for them to do that they have rich tax that is very crazy mm -hmm. they have a cap of how many hours a person they don't have overtime they don't have all these there's things that you go through if you go in, into the details we're just looking at the pretty side this is a flat you're looking at the garden and just you just focus on the rose now nah. Look at when they planted that, mm -hmm. how they did it, and how long it took for the rose to bloom. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There is a system that there's you a want to change. That means there's a trade-off. Exactly. The the are, we, are we as a people willing to give that up? That's what I'm trying to say. That's the I'm thing. Trying to yeah. That's the oh. thing then. That's yeah, the thing. Me... I'm paying extra taxes, and, and that means that I'm, I'm going to rip on the end. I'm going to say it. Yes. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to come in again with the numbers, but... <laughs> I need my facts. No, I need I need my facts to destroy. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I need the facts to destroy. I just want to say you're talking about taxes in Europe and you know how they pay more taxes. But I those want you to know that, that, it's have not that. Con it's okay. Yes. In those, first of all, I agree with the whole socialist capitalism thing. 
same one. But I want to say that even though like they're paying those taxes and they're allowed to have this number of paid leaves or whatever, it's the same. But it's not the same thing that women pay taxes more. Mothers have a four percent increase to pay their taxes, and men have six percent decrease. Do you know about the mommy tax? Well, it's ridiculous that mothers pay. 4% increase in taxes and fathers have a 6% decrease. And imagine a woman who has a low income paying job. She's not even able to afford okay. that. And still okay. we don't get the paid leave that we need. Okay. So we need have... to focus on having more. We need to focus on having better uh, family friendly uh, laws. I just, I so want to add. We can balance that out. I want to add two things. Yeah, I want to add two things to that. I want to first speak to Dan's point because it talks to the structure of society. Like, in that country, just like you said, Scandinavia, for example, they're more socialist. But here in the US, because we're more capitalist, and we can actually see like COVID has kind of lifted the veil. Like we know where all the money's concentrated. So maybe in that essence, it makes sense here that we do have more entrepreneurship because businesses are the ones that are benefiting, right? And to add to your point, if you're talking about 4%, uh, Six, six percent increase for fathers. Okay, but is that not assuming that they're in a married household? Because then is it don't do the do the taxes not uh, offset yes. one another? So married the house. father is contributing. So it might sound bad on the one side. But what but about that, single mothers? Okay, that's a different story. You're you're perfectly right. That's something else. But just also take into a fact that if they are married and there's a a husband on the side, it might not be as bad for her. I completely agree that if it's a single woman, that's a different dynamic. But then even in that, it's problematic in the fact that the woman has to depend on that. Why can't we just pay the same taxes? Why does it have to be the fact that the father brings in the 6% increase and she's bringing, she's taking the 4%? Like, why does it have to be that way? That's a fair and, point. You know, that's a yeah. fair point. I mean, it's, it's America. Hold me. Where are you getting these Wendy? I'm trying to Google uh, this. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so, I need to um, fact check these numbers. You said six percent, four percent. In what country? America. You can go to the website, um, uh, uh, government uh, website, uh, website uh, on there. Which website? Man, listen. The NWP fact that the NWP. fact that okay. the fact that y'all showed up with pens and papers today, <laughs> man, this is serious, bro. <laughs> this is really serious, bro. Yeah, I'm playing. just saying people with pens. Y'all not playing back. with this stuff, man. <laughs> No. Listen, <laughs> now, listen no. man. I gotta ask you this. I gotta ask you this. Brace yourselves for this one. Do you think religion? Do you think religion oh, gives equal rights to men and women? Hell no. no. That's the easy one. Hell no, no, no. Let's go to the next question. No, I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna say Jesus was a feminist. Yes. Mm. He was. What he sense? Didn't they kill him? What sense? He was. Um, in the sense that, okay, like we earlier explained before, obviously, feminism, having the equal rights, equal opportunities, I'm not going to get into the equality shit again. But when you think about it, what Jesus stood for in the Bible, every story that connected Jesus with a woman, he was always uplifting the woman. Even when Jesus died, the whole basis of Christianity is the faith that Jesus rose from the dead. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, we wouldn't even have the faith that we have. When he rose from the dead, why? Of all the people, Jesus had 12 disciples, but he chose well, to show dead. himself to a woman. To go, well, we're basing it off of the Bible. Let me talk about right now. Jesus, 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 Jesus. No. Uh, what? Uh, I said Jesus was a feminist, and y'all questioned me, so I was trying to uh, explain why we even if we go off for right yeah, now, even if we go off right it, now, we're going based off a of scripture that was written back then. I mean, it's the I mean, same I'm thing, just, exactly. Just but Jesus. was then Jesus followed by only men? <laughs> was he followed yeah. by only men? No, 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 no. no, no. His what, disciples what were women. Don't oh, okay, hold on. They were. They were and they are there. The but women were there too. Why did he take twelve disciples and other women? Dan, stop right there. Listen. I'm just asking. I have no idea about religion like that. Listen, listen to me. Religion is taught by men and they only emphasize on the 12 disciples 
that were men, but it doesn't stop that in the Bible, it's written that women were there too. And then even when they say when he rose in, the first people who saw were him women. were women. And so they spread the gospel. They it's don't, not, it's the not because they didn't taught you that, that it doesn't mean they were not there. They were not, they were there, but because men teach about this, they only emphasize about the men and they don't talk about the women. So but the, the answer women, to the AK's question it. is no. <laughs> I just want to make sure I understand. Yes. Thank you for the question. Wow. Yeah. It's been no. 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 Men I mean, I do know that. understand that um, okay if we're gonna talk into what everybody's thinking um we know that everybody was like oh let's speak about today in modern day like catholicism for example we only have male priests and a woman cannot be a priest because the pope is yeah. a man and all the priests are men and it's it's very male centered so i understand how that may come up as religion being unequal or oppressing women but i still have I still believe that, you know. Yeah, we, 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 no, we're saying religion in general, you do realize that, right? Yeah. Oh, religion in we're general. Saying religion in general, where you still Man, have places I where... Think no, I think that religion in general, where you still have women that you're considered unclean and cannot enter a certain building because you are considered unclean. Religion in general, where... Uh, okay, you you I'm, I'm can't just, wear a certain outfit where a dude can just pull up your shorts. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, you can't have your hair a certain way. Religion in general has you y'all fucked up yeah. altogether. Just so you can out. have three women <laughs> and <laughs> ten kids, but a female can't come in just because she's a single mother. You know, little things like that. That's what we're pointing out. Yeah, that's the thing. But if, if we're talking about religion in general... It's like it's it's they 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 trash. They, they, they I'm sorry, but like I disappoint. <laughs> you say say it. Trash. Trash. <laughs> say it. Trash. Trash. But but it doesn't. It, that's religion. That's like the religion and the people who are in those religion. But the Bible itself and God. They are, I mean, I okay, let's just go to the next question, my guy. Let's just go to the next question. <laughs> 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 no, hold on. No, hold on. What she said, as a result, saying that the book equals women, but those who teach the religion don't include women. Is that what is that what she was saying? Yeah. That, yes, that's the yeah. thing. But then your aunties don't help. Like, yeah. Dan, hold on. I see as this being very positive. But, I want to hear. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Well, sometimes I, I don't even I don't even remember what the question was because we go from tangent to tangent, and then he starts talking about statistics that she found somewhere. <laughs> like, like, so you're not, uh, come uh, back uh, here, uh, and then we're back again. Uh, Ooh, uh, again. What you're not gonna do is undermine my intelligence. What was the question again, bro? I'm just well, saying. I, I said, do you think religion no. is equal rights to men and women? If I'm not wrong, and, and let's women. respect each other. Let's respect, each other. Let's respect each other and not undermine it's, it, says, it says it says do you think religion gives equal rights to men and women that was a respect. in what respect are we talking about what are we what are we referencing specifically? just overall <laughs> generally speaking yes I think, I think we can't we can't paint that topic with a broad brush I, I don't think we can. I think you have to take it case by case. I elaborate. I would like to hear this one. Yeah, I think there's some people in some religions that paint it as a merely masculine, a masculine thing. And there's most and there's a lot of people that see it as, okay, men and women are equal. I know a lot of pastors that are women that are dy- dynamite in the spirit that understand what their roles are, <laughs> how to conduct themselves and teach just like any other male pastor would. I know a lot of male pastors that teach equality for women too. So if you want to talk about religion, it has to be a case by case thing. Some people see it one way and some people see it another way. We have this way of painting everything with a broad brush and I just don't agree with it. Well, that was nice. (laughs) 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 Moving on. Okay, I feel you, but then again, 
I'm still checking all the statistics. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When you said, but I, I'm sorry. I got. I, I got into. I'm sorry. When you said. When you said. When we say religion, right? We're talking about Christianity. We're talking about Islam. We're talking about Buddhism. We're talking, we're talking in general terms, right? And the reason why I'm I'm, I'm going to use this part, okay. and I have to Google this part just for the hell of it, right? Because if we're going to go with Christianity, yes, there's pastors that believe blah, 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 blah. But yet, in Christianity itself, there's women that are treated differently just because of something that naturally happens to them every month. What? Right? Just That's just in Christianity. And this is something that will pop up in the Bible. There's when you go to Islam, it's the same thing, okay? It's the same thing again. I'm sorry, something that naturally happens to you in life. And, but it, it just so happens that for you, it happens every month, okay? When, it, when a guy decides to throw up, they don't say, ah, you're now unclean, okay? <laughs> but let a woman, okay? Let a woman have a regular menstrual period. Oh, no, 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 you're not considered unclean, okay? And, and, and uh, man, let, let me show you this. I, I just have to go with Levitic, Leviticus 15, right? When a woman has her regular flow of blood, the impurity of a monthly period will last seven days. And anyone who touches her will be unclean till evening. Anything she lies on during her period will be unclean. And anything she sits on will be unclean. My guy, when she's unclean, there's a lot of shit she's fucking, um, excuse my friend. There's a lot of things that she's limited to, okay? I have to really watch my lingo here, okay? There's a lot of things she's limited to. <laughs> Okay, but yet, my guy, I'm telling you this a guy can have diarrhea for a week, but you will not hear him say who he touches is unclean, who he touches is not allowed to go anywhere, who he touches is there for seven days. None of that nonsense. So, when we speak religion, this is why I'm okay with using it in general terms because the same pastor you're saying is doing that is reading the same Bible that I'm reading over here, right? Can I pull up some so, scriptures too? What? <laughs> Can I pull up some scriptures to, to favor Let's my go to church. Let's, Let's go to church. 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 let us go and I'm going to add to that. I'm going to add to that. There's an African proverb that says, if you only hear the story from the hunter, I mean, if you don't hear the story of the lion, it's always going to glorify the hunter. So if we're going to, you know what I mean? So I, I get what you mean. There's, there's a nuance there. We can't really generalize. Even when we talk about religion, we can only talk about the religion that we know. And even that is nuanced. So that's, that's me. My guy, that's why I say, let's just keep this topic all together. Because uh, all right, so let's, let's 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 up. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Where's another host? Hey, <laughs> hey listen. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, listen. I gotta, hey, listen, I got to put this. I got to ask this. We talk about uh, uh, challenges. We talk about men not listening and all that. So, women, for the for the for the ladies for the ladies here right now, all right, 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 right. This question goes to you. Could you please tell us, you know, what challenges remain for women today? Like, what challenges remain? I mean, y'all said we don't listen, right? In public, right now, we are trying to listen. We are trying to, you know, understand you guys's, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, cry. Please talk to us. What challenges? We don't have enough time, but go ahead. Um, go? I would say the challenges that remain for us today. Um, we're for well, first I would say being still being seen as objects, still being seen as weak, still being seen as way too emotional to be in a position of power. Um, there's so many, like I could go for an hour. Um, then go. I have enough. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, feel like I kind of talked about it. It's just, there's so many challenges that are still, we still, you know, I mean, we, we're trying to prove <laughs> still trying to prove that we can do things that we say we can do. I think this is a more general approach to it. Still trying to fight to prove that we can go to this school, that we can be a president of, of America. Still trying to prove that 
we are smart yeah we're smart it's just so many things still trying to prove that we can be equal as men i think it's weak you know all women are not all weak you know we have our own strengths you know it's not i don't know (laughs) you'd have to go department by department for every single one of these to make for for somebody to be able to say because you can go ahead and say we're it's 2020 and women are still not allowed to take part in special for special ops, you know, special forces. It's still, tw- it's 2020. And it is, I mean, a woman president still sounds like it's something that's, you know, out of this world. Oh yeah. yeah. The fact that because you say that a woman cannot be a president because, uh, oh, we don't know her emotion may change. Please guy, something that I may advise you don't ever, ever tell a woman again because she's acting the way, or oh, are you on your period? Cause that, that, mm, that's bad. That's cute. That is bad. So, that's trash, like, nigga behavior. Go yeah, ahead. You cannot be coming, like, you cannot tell me, be, tell me because I do get on my period. I, I cannot be a president because my emotion may change. I'm sorry, but like, emotion, emotion, it may be true that some women may face some emotion during that time but doesn't be a president and she can rule this world so i don't know like there's so many stuff that were when you're looking at a woman you see as women as something really like literally federal that is going to break no like we are not that federal we have we have our strength from to what we've been through and how we're still standing here is because we are strong physically and emotionally and I do want to say that we we talked about like men listening and they should be listening to us so they can understand and later, you know, try to help us and like trying to like vouch for us. But I would say we can try to explain to men like all day, every day, how we feel, how it is to be pregnant, how it is to get your period. Like they I don't think they can never be us. So they can never really understand. So it's like, what's going to happen? Are we always going to be in this position? I hope not, but it's like, you can explain everything you want. If you're not in the position that I'm in, it's going to be hard for you to understand completely mm-hmm. what, how important it is that we make some changes. I think that's something we need to accept as guys. We will never know how it is you feel, you know, when it, be, when it comes to your period. We'll never know how it feels. When it comes to you have to have an abortion, we never know how it feels when it comes to anything you deal with, but at least trying to, I forget what the word is. I think it's empathize or sympathize. I can't ever tell them the difference. It's one of those. It's, you know, it's, 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 we we'll never empathize, but we can sympathize. There you go. Never <laughs> empathize, but sympathize. Yeah. There you go. I can, I can only imagine what it could possibly be like. Okay, and I can I and I and I should not be one to undermine it. Okay. And yeah. until we're willing to do that and we won't achieve shit. If we keep trying to compare it to what it is I felt or the same thing as I, you know, giving birth is the same as being kicked in the balls. I'm sorry, I ain't heard that's that's kicked in the balls. Yeah. I wanna I just wanna add to that because that's the one of the things also that I experienced when I lived in South Africa. They had this um you know, ongoing violence against women and children. Mm -hmm. And the constant narrative was, oh, you need to imagine if it was your mother or your, you know, someone you were related to. And I don't think that's the issue because it needed to be, you need to respect women, period. And there's certain things within this that women can tell us, but it still takes us going to other men that are causing those problems or not understanding and explaining it to them so they do understand. So that as a front, we're doing what we need to as men so we can you know sympathize but we're gonna have to take it over to the other side and tell them look let's get on board so it's it's a it's a two-way street and And that's on period 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 period. (laughs) that's just it that's the bottom line yeah yeah i agree hey man listen this was swell anybody got anything else to add before i close this recording man (laughs) Yo, I had something to say to Aziz. I, 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 yo, I kept it for so long. I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I was learning to say bye. <laughs> <laughs> He's old.
for it. No, I actually have something to say to you. No, but like, no, this is this is not bad. It's just like coming back to what he said on the beginning when we were talking about black men and black women. I just wanted to remind him how, like, when he, because I told him from the get go that when he said black men, it's literally like, like he he literally disregarded black women as if we don't go through the same thing as black men. You did the, I just you to remind, you like, did the same thing. I didn't. I'm sorry, because I acknowledge and I told you that I know what you go through, and then that I that that is like I will never feel okay as a black woman. I just don't look at it as only it's black men. I look at it as black people because black that's, people we suffer. Not you know to interrupt you. Not to interrupt you, but that's exactly what I've been saying. But, it's not a men and women thing. It's yeah, just us. That's why. But that I'm saying what you say though. It's literally this, when you say it. I'm. I'm gonna say what you say, you say black men. You went on black men while you go through as if black women don't go through that. And to give you an example, it's like, can you imagine that in the US, I'm not, I'm gonna tell you in the US only because I don't know about other countries. I'm, it may be also the same here in Canada. But you know that in the US, a black woman is, they die giving birth because they are not given like they not look they not given proper like yeah i don't know how to say, i'm sorry i'm french yeah. english is like yeah die more and this is like even doctors are talking about it on how black women when they go in labor and they go there and they suffering not even only when they pregnant even when they go to the hospital and they're suffering and be like, I'm having a, head a headache, which should be, which can mean so many other things will be told to go home and take a pill and chill. <laughs> Literally go home, take a pill and sleep and you're going to be okay. And they end up dying. Yep. So when you're talking about that, when you're talking about black men, only putting like emphasis on black men, disregarding black women, when we all go through the same shit, because we're black, look at it as it's for black. Because when Malcolm X and Martin Luther King were fighting, they never say black men on me. They say black people. Okay, so let me rebuttal to what you just said. So if we're talking about black people, I'm with you completely. But I responded to Wendy's initial comments about statistics and black women. So I wanted to give an opposite picture exactly. that didn't undermine black men as well. No, I said mm -hmm. women in general. It wasn't. It wasn't about race. It was okay. generous. Okay. You made it about race, by the way. Who me? Yeah, because right. I, I, I can, know, I can only. Made it about race. Because I can only. I can identify with who I am, so I can't speak for another race. So that's why I made it about race. Yeah, but you talk about black men. You didn't yeah, speak for only black people. Because me, I'm speaking for black people. But you right. spoke just, like. Just, putting in only black men as if black women don't exist. That's because before you spoke, I only heard statistics about black women. Because black so, women are more disadvantaged than we are. Let me, accept that point. Let, me, let, me, let me ask this question. I know there are black women, black men, black people that despite all the injustices, despite everything that we aren't get, get given or getting, that we're not equal to, find a way to be successful, find ways to start mm -hmm. companies, find ways to be CEOs of companies and become the solution to the problems that they see. What do you say to those women that say, despite what we're facing, we're gonna make sure we make it happen for ourselves. And why can't you be that woman? Oh my God, I mean, that woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I didn't hear, I didn't get that. All I heard was woe is me and this is what's happening. Can you say that one more time so we heard you right? Say one more time just to make sure. Wait, 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 we know how it's happening. We know that it's happening. Yeah. And we find a way. So 
like, I'm sorry. And we're doing that. But like, sorry, but <laughs> I'd like to interrupt you. Let me ask you a question. Since you're saying that, and then let me let me go back to when you say black men and you're saying that you're fine and i'm pretty sure right now you're in a good position you all of that does it mean that because you're in a good position you fought and you are in a better place right now that where you can say i'm successful and all of that does it mean that it's gonna make kids like it's gonna like literally erase everything that other black people are going through because no. Like, no 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 that's not what it means. Hold on, let me ask her a question. Since I got a question for you before you ask a question. Let me ask her a question though before I forget my thoughts. Because you be, you throw me different places too, bro. So that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when I didn't have a thing, all I saw was opportunity and I went for it. And mm -hmm. I made it happen. So because I did it, another brother could do it, another sister uh, could okay. do it too. Because I chose to see the solution and not the I'm problem. Sorry. If we want to continue to see the problem, we're going to have the same conversation a year from now and be saying the same statistics a year from well, now. Well, Aziz, Aziz, I got a question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to interrupt on this one. Aziz, for the sake of my next point, okay, I'm not going to ask the exact age. I'm going to ask... Made everybody take a I'm shot. sorry, I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> for the sake of my next point, for the sake of my next point, Aziz, I'm going to ask a, a, a question, right? I would like to know what is... What, what, would, what would you say your age range is? I don't want the exact age. You can just give it a range. 32. 32, perfect. Okay. So do you believe that there is 32, 32 year old multimillionaires, Absolutely. right? Okay, what's stopping you then? <laughs> what's stopping you? My thing is this, my thing is this. There's 32 year old multi black multimillionaires, right? Me stating that there's 32 year old multimillionaires does not mean that that, that 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 does not that does not negate the fact that you have your own challenges. But let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Do Go you know what I do and how much I make? Hmm. Do you know what I do and how much I make? Uh, I, 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 did, I, I, you, did you just assume? Because you know what? I assume. I assume, and I will revert again. Are you a multimillionaire? But, but my question is, why did you assume? No, no, no. I okay, because because from my <laughs> understanding of the last conversation we had, you're not a multimillionaire. Right, okay? right. So we didn't talk uh, about money. No, according to the last conversation we had, you're not a multimillionaire. But we didn't talk about money. So how did you make that assumption? Okay, no, no that's fine. That's fine. Let's 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 even change it. Are you a billionaire? Let's I'm let's. Not a billionaire. Right? Okay, perfect. There you go. So there's 32 year old billionaires I, I in today's day and age. What changed? Point, Before you continue, let me make a point. We always see ourselves as a modern lift, mm -hmm. as a modern lift, right? And because you couldn't see yourself in that position, you automatically assumed that I couldn't be in that position. And that's the problem. We're not the same and we're not a monolith. And just because you can't do it doesn't mean Aziz won't do it. That okay. no, no. Can I, can I add point. to that? No, no, we that's are deferring the from the that's point. That's not the point. That's Excuse not the point. You missed my point. I didn't get what he said. No, 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 no. deferring for the point. You missed my point. Yes. You missed my point. Just, my I, point was, when you saying... No, when, when you're saying that if they, if they can do it, I like basically saying that there's no excuse is what I was trying to get at, okay? If, if there is 32-year-old multi, if there's 32-year-old billionaires, according to your same logic, there is no excuse why you should be 32-year-olds, a black male, and not be a billionaire, okay? Because you didn't take care of all the opportunities that came your way. That is the same logic you're using right now. I didn't... That's I didn't, what I'm trying to get at. I didn't define... My success is being a billionaire. You did first of all. No, no, no. That's not what it was. That's not what it was. Success has its own rate. Success has its own rate. I use money in this aspect for that. Okay. Well, okay? we're talking about that's right. I, make, I make good money. I make good money. You're right. You're right. But yeah. that doesn't that, that doesn't change the fact that there's a billionaire out there that's exactly your age. That's also black. Okay. But I, I feel like. And guess what? Okay. I'm so I was. I feel like today's questions. Today we were called here to be on Zoom to answer questions and give our opinion about issues. That was that's why we talked about issues. It doesn't mean that when we turn this app off that we're not gonna try to you know like that we're not gonna keep on working hard and that we're not gonna try to do our best knowing that people are out there not giving it the same opportunities as, as others like. Today, we talked about it today. We talked. About, this was the point of this conversation. But it doesn't mean that we're not gonna thrive. We're not gonna try to thrive because it's inequality, like inequality. Okay. Like that. I wouldn't... Mean, thank you. Just, thank you. Thank you. I just, I just want to make sure that we're not we're not those people that 
we sit around and we read all these articles and we uh, listen to all these quote unquote scholars. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, we can't do anything right. about our own situation. I just, I just wanna, I just wanna add that because this is one of the things that I've noticed. So I had someone tell me, oh, you know, on Forbes, you know, there are black people that are billionaires now, just like you mentioned about billionaires that, you know, can stand against uh, white people that are also billionaires. But the reality is typically those billionaires on the white side have enough money that it's going to trickle down to their families. Mm -hmm. It's typically a white family type of wealth. On our side, it's an individual that is typically a billionaire. And we have this, uh, you know, uh, wrong perspective where, and I'll use this analogy, we're looking at it as a race, like a 100 meter race, where we want to put the best black person, whether it's male or female, to mm -hmm. run up against other races that are already having mm -hmm. a head start. When we should be doing is looking at it like a four by 100 meter, mm -hmm. where we have young people, old people, men, women, and the overall goal is, is our team going to succeed? Because individually what happens is, <clears throat> No matter which one of us is the best, we will just ultimately be a statistical anomaly within our own group because the average is so low. Mm. And then you go into a white group and you'll only end up being ostracized because you're still the minority in that group. Mm. So it speaks to that point. You know, we've all been, I don't know if we've all been, but the fellas know the last dance with Michael Jordan and the Bulls, right? There's this instance where, and I'll, I'll kind of break it down so everybody gets it there's ownership mm. and there's the players. And the ownership is the one that owns the control. And if they see that you're getting all the credit for the success of the organization and they don't like it, they'll put barriers in place to disband you and make sure you don't win as a team. That's mm. where we're at. There's systems in place that don't want us as a team to succeed mm. and we're allowing it to defeat us. Mm. So as long as we're still all on the same page, that's the only thing that matters. Okay, but and let's not as a team. I will not. Let, nah, I would agree team. with Joe. Yeah. No, but but let's as a team. Let's not try to choose what side of the team is is like trying to trying to act like the, there's one side of the team that doesn't have more disadvantage than we. Of course not. Yeah. Our yeah. team. Listen, our team listen. Are listen. Come on. We do. If we are one team, as a team, you do know who you we who you. I, I, I hate to use it even this way. I don't, I'm not trying to say a weakling, but the one that has the least, the most disadvantage out of all of y'all and trying to make sure that you bring them up with you when you go up. Yes. Instead of looking on one side and saying, okay, look, we're at a disadvantage. That's us. Well, y'all, I don't know why y'all complaining because there's people that are supposed to be in your lane that's doing good. That's, that's, that's the thing I had a problem with when Aziz said, it's like, you know what? There's, yeah. there's, 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 like, no, 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 it's not no, doing it. That's team, not what Aziz said. Thank you, Dan. Well, okay, maybe I, understand, I misunderstood it, but listen, okay. if we're all one team, me... if we're all one team, Dan, then hold on, if we're all one team, let's look at every, it comes back to the same equity, equity shit we were talking about earlier. As all one team, let's look at what's gonna benefit everybody equally in terms of, hey, look, I know you you thirsty and I'm hungry. How about I get you food and I get me water and we all gonna succeed that way. But let's not look at those, I don't know, you hungry, but there's people that's eating. I don't understand why you're still hungry, but hey, I'm thirsty and we got water. That's all that matters. All right, let me ask you this. Do you believe that there are people that are out there doing what exactly Aziz said? Mm -hmm. Cricket. That's yeah. I'm just gonna what ask. Mean, what you mean? Yeah. Explain. Like, yeah. People that are out there, there are. talking the talk and then sitting on the couch and chilling. Yes, definitely. And then after that, the they're gonna bash yeah. every single other person that made it and still claim they are still at a disadvantage. While like everybody else did something about it and then they went forward. That's all. Like the, I feel like that's, that's what we, I got from it. That's and all. That's why we need that kind of Thank input you, because it yeah. then like it speaks to um. Josh's point and Aziz's point. We need the people like Aziz that can point those people out. Yeah. Because like Josh said, there's some people that are not uh, used to the team. So everybody's input is, is necessary. And also to Wendy's side, when she's giving statistics and making everything a whole, you, you are putting us in a position where it's women against men. That's and then that's why Aziz, I, that's why I felt like Aziz had to put the men's problems too to kind of equal, you know, equal the field a little bit. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's what happened. But also In the general. reality is this: as people, black people, we have problems 
But our biggest problem is how we deal with it together. We don't have a togetherness. And that has nothing to do with whoever is a billionaire and whoever is broke. It's just, I mean, you've seen it in, as entertainers. When an entertainer put, comes in, he makes a million dollars. Oh, he ain't shit. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, I like, I like, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Mr. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold Dan, on. You I'm not missing, I'm just saying this just, in general. Just hold on. Just hold on. Dan, with what you said, right? Let me ask this question, Dan. Should yes, sir. we put a parity, right, between black rights and women rights? That's what I was going to say. We talk of, Bro, there and, should be no reason why if we're talking about black women's rights, we're talking about guys. I was going to say this. I was sorry. I was going to say that um, Dan said I brought the statistics uh, making it about men versus women. No, I was bringing the statistics to show you the disparity in everything, in the opportunities that women have versus men. It wasn't about bringing men versus women. It is the fact. That's what it is. And then Aziz brought in the race factor into it. I wasn't saying it was black women versus black men or whoever. Aziz brought the race factor into this. This whole conversation, we're talking about women's rights in the first place. That was the, yeah. that's, that's what we're talking about in the first place was women's rights. And I was bringing those to show you what the, the, the status quo is. That's what it was. Okay, I, have, I just have a question to that because I, I get what you're saying, but also if you look deeper in those statistics, it does still show factually that black women are more disadvantaged in that statistic of just women. So race is still a factor. Yeah. And that's why I think, that, yeah, I still think there's overarching themes Ooh. and what you brought in, I'm not against with what you brought in because you did need to voice that side. Otherwise we won't know the reality, mm. just how bad it is. So as long as those things are brought to the fore and we can understand them, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, Joe, when quarantine is over, I got you on the drinks, bro. <laughs> no worries. I'm for it. I'm for it. <laughs> Not only him, me too. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> no, seriously, that's why, like, when Wendy came in and was speaking about that, that's why I wanted to emphasize when Aziz came <clears throat> in, I heard him talking only about, uh, talking about yeah. black men, and then there was, no, there was not any time I heard him say black people. Like you have to understand, we all black people face the same thing, but like we have different level. As being a black woman, me as a black woman, what I face is double time because not only am I black, but I'm also a woman. So I have two handicaps. If I was gay, I would be like three times down, you know? So you gotta like keep that in mind and remember that. I think Dan, I think Dan highlighted what I was doing and um, maybe he could sum it up again because for whatever reason, it's not translating to certain groups. <laughs> He's playing no, no, no. devil's advocate. No, no. <laughs> the thing is this, one thing is this is, uh, and um, this is with all due respect to everybody, I felt as though when... Josh, still drinking? Nah, I'm not. Not yet. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not drinking. We're going to get there. I, I actually, you know what, matter of fact, I just poured my first glass, so we're, we're getting it. <laughs> Make sure you know, you're clear-headed when you're speaking. Yeah. I'm clear headed as I'm saying this, okay? As is my my where my problem came in, right, was the fact that when the same thing we're just talking about, you know, it's a team, right? We gotta recognize who maybe is more at a disadvantage in the team and acknowledge that part and deal with that part as well. You keep using a disadvantage though. What? What do you mean? It's, 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 it's a black man Josh, is. Josh, Josh, That's a fact. That a black man is? Josh, Josh, no, a black Josh. woman is more than a black man is. What do you Josh, mean? That's Josh, a wait, fact. Josh, wait, wait, Josh, wait. Isis, you cannot be coming like that because when the conversation started, you the one who brought, brought in black men. Right. You see, brought hold on, black on. men so we still... black men. Okay, let, 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 let me finish this part. Let me finish this part. Let, no, no, I see, I see. hold on. No, let me finish my point. Let me finish my point real quick. Let me finish my point real quick. If there's one thing we've already agreed on, right, is that this is all one team. Okay, mm -hmm. and we should all be fighting for the same thing, correct? Can we yes. agree on that part, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so now when somebody decides to say, hey, look, on this team, there's some of these people that are at a disadvantage. How about we figure out a way to, you know, even out the field for them as well, so that if we come up, we all come up and nobody's left behind, okay? When that was brought up, 
it was more like Aziz, and this I'm just gonna say how I interpreted what you said. It's more like you said, like, well, the A team's struggling right now, and we're supposed to be winning. It's like, no, my guy, it's not about the A team right now. Because right. in this disadvantaged group, the A team struggling is not the biggest problem. We need to figure out who the most disadvantaged is. Bring everybody up, bring everybody to the same level playing field and say, you know what, we're going we all gonna go up together. Yeah. Right? When you go ahead, let me ask you. When you go ahead and say, hold on, let me finish my point. When you go ahead and say, when you go ahead and turn around and say, oh, but you no, know, the women in my circle are winning. That's, that's cool. Saying. That's no, nobody, nobody hating on that part. But in, in, the, in the general sense of terms, is yo, look, your women might be winning. That's why I ended up bringing up the whole idea of you know what, a house slave or a house nigga. They was winning in their in their circle. They were good. They didn't have to get whipped. They have to do. They got the good food. They got the good clothes. They got all the good stuff. But hey, if they refuse to deal with that part, guess what? The slave that's outside is also fucked now. So let's stop acting like the house nigga and understand that hey, it's all a team. At the end of the day, it's a slave. We're still slaves. We're trying to get everybody free. In terms, just just generally speaking, generally speaking, I just use the slave ideas something for everybody to understand. Yeah. Okay, but. Let's all let's just understand that everybody needs to be free. And just because I'm a house nigga and I get to have all the fancy food and the fancy clothes, don't mean that my brother's outside and not struggle. Mm -hmm. You get what that's, that's, this, that's all I was trying to get at. You get, yeah, get, and I have said before, has, as this keeps mentioning and keeps using personal examples, well, he's doing a good job, but every other person should be doing it. Well, there are women around me who are doing it we just so all the women should be doing it and that's why it's very important for us to see the big picture just because we are good in our personal lives doesn't mean other people around the world even in the u.s are good there's a lot of people who are disadvantaged and that's the fact and that's why it's important to have numbers because they don't lie just because things are good for you don't mean things are good for everybody yeah black okay. <laughs> women especially are at a disadvantage in america and that's what it is there is an expression as is there's an expression that say don't look only like up to your nose try to look far away because if you only look up to your nose you will never get anywhere because okay. you can be able to see around you what's going on and be able to see okay this is something that is going on and this is not right and be able to say okay how am i going to be able to help in this then somehow you are part of the problem so personally what do, what are you what are you doing to to kind of fix the situations that you have such an me issue with. what i'm doing when it comes to as i say before when it comes to women rights and all of this and everything that happened around women personally when i see that as a black woman first of all i fight two thousand two times harder because i know that i cannot be sitting and expecting to be at the same level as another woman who's not my race because i know i need to give like five times more for me to get upper to where he, she is because that that define who that's because of my race is and the country that i'm in so i have to fight ten thousand times more and then when it comes to women rights i teach as i said i teach my nephews my nieces my nephews how to be better to be better men how to better this world that tomorrow if they're sitting down with other boys and men that they don't know and they see acting not right to also teach them to be better men. That's what I'm doing on my end. That's what I'm able to do. If I'm in a better place, in a better position, higher up, I'm going to do more. So how that. do you get there? I'm fighting for it. That's what I'm telling you. I'm working 10,000 more to be able to get that. And then when I'm going to be sitting in that position, I'm going to be doing more. Keep fighting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Success is different for everyone. Like, if tomorrow I want to open a fucking, I don't know, a field of, like a tomato field and I make it and I'll be happy. I just felt like what you said to me was kind of like, I understood it. If as, you could just sit there and don't say anything. That's why we heard when you talked. Yeah. To us. It felt like you were saying that we're complaining about inequality and we wake up every day and we think, man, well, it's going to be unfair anyway. So we're just going to sit there and wait for it to change. No, I feel like we're in this group. I feel like we're all very smart, all very intelligent. And we all play our parts and we're all trying to do great work so we can achieve what we want to achieve. Like, I don't ever want, well, I don't care what anybody thinks about me, but that's not how we, that's not, no. We're trying our best, people on different paths. 
you know, take it one day at a time, but we're never by any means that we're going to give up or like not work hard because things the are- The that we're seeing even here right now talking about this, it's ourselves walking into trying to be, to, to make it better. The fact that yeah. we're sitting here and having this discussion with any of you and going on this pod- podcast is because we want to make things better. That's our work that we're doing. I just believe in action and as long as you're putting the action behind the word. That is, this is an action. This is an action. This is an action. Talking is an action. What do you think Everybody of that thing? Everybody I want talk. talk. This is First of all, talking. Everybody has the right to talk. Talking <laughs> That's is part an of the problem. Action. Everybody has a, the right to talk and it's a free for all and there's no consequences. Everybody has the right to talk, but everybody doesn't do it. Not everybody, that's, not that's, everybody. That's what the point is trying to make. Yes, but that's what I said in the beginning. We need, um, Leila is talking about what she's doing. I mean, I talking about what she's doing. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing to fight this. And you guys need to come in too, which is the point I said from the beginning. We do need men to fight too. You guys, as you're asking everybody, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you, Aziz? What are you doing? What are you doing to make sure we have a, a, a level, a level? playing field for everybody, everybody to win because you're so focused on everybody winning <laughs> what are you doing to make that happen Kunta just told you my team is winning so join the team if you want to win because yeah. talking is not going to do it no 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 are no, 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 no 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 are you the one that be like that's what you say Kunta my team is winning no 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 that's but I happen to care about other people and then you compare me to a big Excuse me, what I said. Aziz. We Aziz. all have to make Aziz. sure Aziz. the whole time, please. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good, but you know, I'm thinking about more people than my circle. I'm not having yeah. a myopic view of life. It's bigger than myself and it's bigger than the people around me. Well, if your circle is just talking about it, they need to come out at me. Oh, well, we're not just. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, okay, look, that's very controlling. That's, that's very condescending. Requesting. No, no, requesting, requesting, yeah, requesting time. I'm over here requesting time, please. And Kunta, please. with all due respect, we just had a podcast last week and you talked about not giving a girl $300. Oh, whoa, 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 Don't get it all fucked up. No, don't get it all confused. Don't get it all confused. I'm, saying, I'm glad bro, you brought that up. Of the fence that I you're am on. glad you brought that guy, I, so you're going to be that guy. I am <laughs> glad you brought that up. I am so glad you brought that up. Because while I said that, you can't give her three hundred dollars. She's probably not gonna be marching on Washington. No, 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 no. And, and, and what I said is I should not be expected to do so. Now let me clarify that part. I was not? Saying, not be expected to do so. If I do want to do so, I should be able. The same thing goes back to to the choice mm. of wanting to do so rather than expected to do so. Okay, so it's I want the choice okay. to do so. Okay, when it comes back now to you on the other side, what you did say for a fact is that you know what, as a man, if you're not willing to be you know, if you're not financially raised, you're not beautiful now. When on the other side, the what you're advocating for does not quite line up what you said. But what I did say before that about my team, I'm talking about today, what I'm talking about today, my team winning, is making sure that everybody in my team makes it. This is not just about the A team. It's not just about the advantage team. It's that everybody, people that are disadvantaged, and whatever it is, we need to bring everybody down to the same playing field and make sure that if we are winning, we're all winning. We're not just saying black people are winning when in our reality it's just black men winning mm. and black women are still having the same struggles they have right. all day. And no, that, let me, if let me everybody's just, winning, let let's make sure. Let so, so when people are asking, when people are asking, uh, what are you doing on a daily basis to make sure you fight that? There needs to be a, a, an intentional and and conscious decision that you're making on every day to make sure. Hey, you know what? This is what I'm doing to make sure that this happens. Let me, let okay? me just add one thing. I I get what Aziz is trying to say. There's there's going to be thinkers and there's doers. Thank you. Some of us are going to think about things. Others are going to do it. All I'm saying is that what he's trying to say is, yes, you can think about it. You can imagine, but you need proof of that thing being done with someone who's done it in reality to even be able to know it's going to keep, it's possible. So I'm, I'm perfectly for that. I get what you mean. You, you MJ and some people are Scottie Pippen. We got to just balance it out. I'm just no going to say, he's considering himself the duo, the talker, and this one. One second. One second. One second. This case is the duo that talks. I want to say, as and Joe, I want to say, I want to know, what are, know. what are you doing? I'm the duo. I want to say, what are you doing? Sorry, I want to say something. Let me, I say, sorry. Slow down. Let me, let me just piggyback off of what Joe says about the thinkers and the doers. I want to say that in the fight for making things, fighting for women's rights and everything, you don't necessarily have to do something. Yeah. 
respecting women. You kind of do. A physical action that we can quantify. You respecting women, and that is a huge difference that it's gonna make. If when men start respecting women, that's a huge difference it's gonna make. But you cannot sit here and actually see as a as an action. Of course, it can display itself in different ways. How you treat women and how you you objectify women, you can see it display itself. But when you say thinkers and doers, I just wanna let you know that doing something is not really necessary like a verbal like something active with your body so let's just put that out there uh, uh, when you respect the woman you're doing something. that's what i'm saying like doing something you, that's doing something but it's not it's not something that you can necessarily quantify that's what i'm saying yeah like, it is see that something. like listen like like um sami said right Layla said that she she's she's what she's doing is she's teaching exactly, her nephews that's what and nieces saying about things right and then you go on and their friends they will be taught too it's you know it's passing down but we like i said again no matter how we want to put this we are like i feel like the major problem that we face isn't is actually us communication first and foremost second of all the way like men are raised and the way women are raised which starts the whole problem is is something that needs to be changed but how can you change that is by educating ourselves first and then passing it down now that's a very thing called doing you do that you don't just say it you do it, it. now there are people that i'm going to say that claim to be feminist but go outside right. and do things that i wouldn't do to my own self to their own like feminist sisters you know what i mean and that's women and it's not men i'm saying that's women there are women that are out there doing things worse than what men are doing to other women yep sure and also the whole team thing as a team you bring your we first have to have a goal right the goal is to stop being oppressed and i feel like let's like i don't know about the workplace i feel like if there's so many things that are involved in this environment that you can't really make it a small thing you have to go by detail but like in a household for example a husband the way he treats his wife that is seen by the son that is seen by the daughter the way the wife is talked to or talks to the son and talks to the daughter it's seen by those two and that is what is passed down and passed down and passed down now the way i'm looking at it is this the solution to our problem and i'm saying this because i'm a man i feel like we can't really find a solution like today for one side like i feel like first and foremost when we come to a black community we're in so much shit excuse my language that to separate men and women just creates more shit mm. and i'm not saying this like women are not being stepped on and anything no i'm saying as 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 a as a race we are at the bottom the same way you said the, the cops pull you over it don't matter if i'm a man or a woman as long as i'm brown i'm getting shot mm-hmm. you know what i mean so in order to give you your rights as a woman you first have to have rights as a person okay let me that's that's my view and i'm saying this as a guy but the definition of having rights as a person is being a man everything that dan has said i remember before when i was talking about something and i mentioned that the way boys grow up and they talk to objectify women and as this made a face like what she talking about i'm happy that you said that because when we're fighting for women's rights this is inherent this is something that is you cannot see it i said this thing is subconscious the way boys are raised the way girls are raised you grow up and you see the same things over and over around you from the house from your dad from when you go to school the boys around you see these things constantly it makes you the man that you become and you grow up you're a grown ass man and you're disrespecting women because from when you were a child nobody told you different yeah. and that's how we have the problem that we have today that's and it shows itself in different aspects so yeah we have to start by teaching i talk to my brother all the time i talk to my friends my family my uncles my dad like i i 
I actually do something about it, but the fact is you guys have to do something too. Because my brother is more, he's going to listen to my dad before he's going to listen to me. Mm-hmm. Man to man talk. He's going to listen to my older brother before he's going to listen to me. We need but men men to talk to we need men to well, hold up men accountable, hold your friends accountable, speak to your younger brother. It's something as small as that goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Uh, for starters, I just want to say that not all men grow up in environments where they're taught to objectify women. So that's, See, that's what we're saying, though. And but that's second, what she say. I, I just want to make sure that that's clear yeah, for. Yeah, that's what she like, say. Not not all not all men need your your counsel. Like some men grow up in households where women are respected and women teach them. As and they see men respect women. Like nobody said that all men need my counsel. And I'm not giving my counsel to like, all men. Like, no, like to use I feel like you keep no, as if you keep picking up, you keep picking up the little things and making it a big issue. I, I didn't even say that. I, I didn't even say that. That's exactly I mean, what you're saying. Hey, if, if, if we're gonna listen to someone's opinion, we need to hear what the whole message is that they're trying to pass along, and I pick and choose what we want to hear out of the whole I message. Did, no, I'm I just saying, out of respect for the person. I'm sorry. I, I think Josh, until you you cough up that 300 that we not talk. Brown, hold on. I see. Can I say something to you? I feel like you 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 only like drew some part of what Wendy was saying and didn't understand what the message was giving. Her message in general. Was, we are we as us need to do better. Like all of us. Like even men need to do better. Cause what we are, what men sees is like little little boy sees is that what they're going to do when they're going to be growing up if they grow into a it doesn't mean that all the houses are like right. that no but there's houses like that that's why she's saying men need to teach because even if me i'm doing this with my nephews but if my brothers who are their uncles their dads not doing what they're supposed to do and they're treating their women wrongly they're not gonna listen to me. They, for me, it's gonna be like, oh, that's how m- women talk. But m- my dad is not doing that. Why am I gonna do that if my dad is not doing that? That's literally what she's saying. It's like we men also need. We can try to do the work, but men need to do that work too. It doesn't mean that the house world you grew in is fucked up. No. If you grew in a good household and you know how to treat the right way a woman, that's good. good for you. Good then teach you. your friends. Yeah teach the people around you like it's not about you it's about teaching others why you so so they don't do the mistakes so they can do better because i'm sorry if people were doing that we wouldn't be in this world there wouldn't be numbers out there like the numbers that are out there how kids would like south africa by example any word if we're talking about how women are like tortured killed violated like going to see if you sit down one day with women you're going to be sitting with what five women in those five women four women of them have been objectified that have been touched in a wrong way they've been raped they've been like it's really bad so to the point where you're seeing that where you're sitting down when the me too movement movement started and you were seeing all your friends who are on Facebook then that is wrong there's something wrong if everybody is saying I've been through that, that I've seen that I've been into that mess it's because there is something wrong that is going on there's something that we haven't done the right way so that's Wendy what she's saying is men need to help in that doesn't mean that you were in a good household that you saw all of that then what have you done what have you done on your end? What you were taught, are you teaching that to your friends? Preach. Do you see your friends doing something wrong and being like, man, that shit is wrong. Don't ever do that again. You should never treat a woman that way. Have you done that? But the... Okay, okay, okay hold, on, hold 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 on, my God. Listen, I'm sorry, man, but I got to cut this short. You see what I'm saying? We've been on here. Ah! Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Hold on. No, hold on. Let's talk about this. We've been up this. Well, people, people, those people were. Anyways, listen, 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 my guy. Listen. <laughs> no, make, your point. make 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 your point. 
DK, you know, uh, my, my thing is this: we can't, we can't, we can't be guys that sit here, right, and talk about, oh, we should give this girl three hundred dollars without asking questions, <laughs> but we're not willing to acknowledge the struggles they go through on a daily basis, okay, and we're trying to make some change for them and other ones that come after them, okay. Yeah, but okay? I'm not just a no, that's just a straight fact. So you talk about the three dollars, it was a simple thing. The same thing the women were talking about, they want to have a, the choice to make, that, to make that decision, whether they make that decision or not, is the same thing I was saying. We shouldn't go by what side wants us to. If we're gonna be, if we're gonna be the people that say, you know what, this is what I agree with, we need to be able to, we need to be willing to say, you know what, I'm willing to take this step to make sure, not only does my generation stop doing this, but the generation that comes after me also respects this. Just the simple fact that, that you just just simply because you were raised in the right whatever doesn't mean that there's not somebody else that's not you're getting your case again and isolating it and saying the women I'm with win so that means women's struggles don't exist okay? which is the vibe I got off of the whole thing yeah. okay whereas we're supposed to just recognize like okay look I've been lucky and I've been I've been blessed to have women that are winning without a problem and everything is good on their side but what about the women on the other side? What can I do as a man to make sure that, hey, this side of the team also makes it? I feel like if we're gonna if we're gonna stick with this same mentality, let's 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 go all out on all aspects. I feel like I feel like King Kunto, you should write a book. <laughs> but the thing is that you need money to buy the book. And since you're not willing to spend money, I don't want to hear anything you're talking about. What do you mean? I need to write a boy. What? Right. Right. Say that one more time. Say that one more okay, time. Hold on, time out. Hold on, time out. I want to hear that one more time. I want to hear that one more time. Man, hold up, time out. Time out. Please, time okay. Out. I want to hear that one more time. Man, listen, we're not gonna do this. I know you wanna hear it. You can hear it later when this video comes out. You can rerun it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Aziz, you didn't respond to my question though. You didn't what was your question? I said, what have you done? Because you say that you grew up in a good household and all of that then what have you done on your end because you asked me what i've done but what have you done on your end to make it better to make what, what better to make what better like what's going are you trying to like, how is like, he going to make anything better if he doesn't he, recognize that there's something wrong he doesn't recognize the problem he, he doesn't recognize that there is a problem so he can't take can't do anything okay. to make anything okay. better i'm sorry i'm sorry aziz aziz so for you sitting down, okay, I'm just gonna, like, as, as I said, because I feel like you didn't hear anything since you're asking me that, like, you didn't hear what I said the whole time. I was trying to say, like, yes, you were, being, you were raised in a good household, you know how to treat women and all of that. I think we all were. But do you, do, you, do you acknowledge that what's going on now out with also seeing all the people that posted about the Me Too movement, how, Five, four women into five women can be sitting with you and talk, tell you that have been sexually assaulted or they've been touched in the wrong way or they've been mistreated by men in any kind. When you hear that or when you see that men, when you see, because I know men do that, I've seen that, what have you done to change Okay, that? let me say this. I don't condone the mistreatment of women, but I don't condone empty conversation either. The only thing I can do is keep doing what I'm doing, and that's just keep Then doing. what's... Well, are doing how well. is that benefiting the black woman? It's been a question all I, along. I, I have black women in my family. Then, okay. And well, they see the family. solution. They don't see the problems, bro. All right, yo, we're going in circles now. It's okay. There's no point. All right, AK, there you were saying? Like, like, over to you. Listen, <laughs> let's go back to AK real quick. Listen, man, I appreciate you guys. <laughs> You know what I mean? I appreciate you guys. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. That's why I brought all of you here. You know what I mean? I knew this was going to happen. So what's going to happen right now is each and every one of you, you know, in the comment section, who is going to listen to this, yeah, please yeah. have these conversations at home as well. This is, I mean, these are great conversations to have, you know what I mean? Because everything starts with having this conversation and having, you know, understanding what we're talking about and all that. Don't worry. We'll get to talk about this again next week. Tune in. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Tutu. My, Tune in again. So just keep going and do part one, part two, part three, part four. <laughs> so just keep it going because at this point, fire is burning inside. But okay, I understand. Gosh, <laughs> uh, fire that's burning, make it tangible and go make some money so you don't, you're not so tight. I already am. I'm not even okay, worried about it. Okay, I've been home the last two weeks and boy's still cool. Lord have mercy. <laughs>
So you guys come here. You go down right. for a second. Oh, oh, oh. Hey guys, you go down for a sec. I, right. I right. hold on, hold on. Thank you, uh, Layla, Wendy, um, um, Amina, Joe, Dan, uh, Aziz, Josh, uh, Tutu. Thank you guys, you know, for coming on, having this conversation. Um, like I said, next week we're going, you know, there's a part two to this, you know what I mean? So we're going to keep going. You know, everybody wants to burn. Everybody wants to, you know, quench. Whichever you want to do, that's, you know, just bring it next time. No problem. Just bring it next time. We'll continue the conversation. Like your hands. Same way, you know what I'm saying? Just bring it. We'll continue the conversation next time, okay? I'm group. Uh, pre- <laughs> hey, can each other one of you give your social handles? How can people reach out? <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. My social handle is Miss Young International, all spelled out. Get him. Follow me on social media, underscore, underscore, black girl activist, or aphrodisiac. <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> Which one is it? I have two pages, y'all. Oh, oh, we got a lot to talk about next time. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go visit your page, nah, activist. Oh yeah, black girl activist. On the no, no, we're going to Aphrodisiac. No, we're going to. Listen, we're going to listen, listen. We are on. We are on. How can people reach you, Layla? How can people reach you? Um, it's uh, mine. It's uh, in, my Instagram is queen underscore four bw. Uh huh. Joe, how can people reach you, man? Underscore Joe. Uh, Joe at Joe underscore ks Wait, what? At Joe underscore KSY. Okay. You, need, you need to follow him, Quinta. Oh, I'm on it. Yeah, you need to follow him. He can help you. Bro. I am educated man. Underscore the beast. Josh, no, what's Dan, your, doesn't, uh... Dan doesn't follow back, so don't, <clears throat> don't, don't a sec. Wait, don't you haven't back. followed me yet. You're right, because you said you don't follow back, so I'm not going to request Come you to follow back. <laughs> no, no, no. I for the sake don't. of this, for the sake, for the sake of this, I'm going to go today. No, no, my, my Instagram, my Instagram is approver, A-P-P-R-O-V-E-R. And I promise you, if you request and whatever, if you don't even want to send a message, just say, as I, <laughs> I promise I'll follow back. I guarantee you. Me too. Help and, me, and, help and, me. And then, and then, and then, and then for Snapchat, that's going to be Mr. Oh, underscore approver. Yeah. It's going to pop up as King Kunta. So. Oh, I might as well my other handle. Um, Aphrodisiac, A-P-H-R-O-D-I-Z-Z-I-A-C-Z. What the? Y'all can also type it in the chat. You can type it in the chat. If y'all don't get everybody's thing, just type it in the chat. True, true. They can't see it online if you type it in the chat, Suti. Oh, sorry, sir. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, It was great, though. Um, Have a great weekend. Go check out Reflex Book. Oh, yeah. Book, too. That's May 5th. May 5th. This is how I know. This is how I know we'll never have any unity between us. (laughs) Simple. Just be quiet. Let me close the show. No, everybody wants to speak, but nobody <laughs> wants to be quiet. Right. Y'all don't let me finish appreciate... my, uh, giving out my username. Y'all can follow me on Instagram at U-T-U-B-A-Y-B-E-E. All right. Who was saying what? Who wanted to say what? No, I Sato was trying to say our YouTube. Hey, can you have Follow my YouTube channel, too. Look at you. Follow my YouTube channel, Tutu with the most. And, 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 and before y'all even get off, of here, remember to check this book out right here. No such thing as have fun. But the boy himself, Achumba, aka Reflex. So, you know, go get your own book. Make sure you pre order and see. Make sure you get that thing signed and all that. You know, <laughs> you, you get, you're going to get the plug. It's a good book. I'm reading it. I'm not that far, but I'm reading it. Okay. That's all I'm reading. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can go close. Go close. <laughs> all right, man. Hey man, I follow the part. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I just go ahead, say, go ahead. As the God is my witness, I actually wanted to shout out Reflex on the show too. So the fact that everybody did it is kind of cool. But I just want to say this brother is an author, he's an artist, a network engineer, and he hosts a podcast. Man, his brother's doing a great job of reflecting the kingdom. And uh, I pray for more grease to your elbows, bro. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. Yes, sir. Hey. Man. I don't know why I'm frozen, man, but I was confused. He's using fact. Metro PCS. Uh, <laughs> that's that was Wi-Fi. Oh, Josh, you're talking too, too much. He wants to end. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, sir. Go. <laughs> hey, listen. Man, you know what? We out. We out. <laughs> we out. We out. <laughs>